are watching Blunt Politics with Boston Brian. Welcome. We made it back for another edition. Welcome to Blunt Politics. I am Boston Brian. Thank you for being here. I do appreciate it. Hope everybody's had a good weekend. Hope everybody's healthy. Hope everybody's happy. Uh, again, thank you for being here. A lot going on. Um, I see you guys talking about the SNL <laughs> skit, which just absolutely had me on the floor laughing. I mean, was there a better spot on rendition of what Katie Britt from Alabama was just, and I don't know if you've seen it, but she also has a new clip on Fox where she pretty much doubles down on uh, the bullshit story, not the bullshit story because it is a true story, but the way she the way she intended it to sound as if Joe Biden uh, was responsible for that somehow, which is just beyond ridiculous. Um, but thank you again, Benny. How are you? Great show the other day. Thank you for chatting with me in the chat. That was great. You guys are awesome. Uh, I do appreciate it. Kyle, thank you. Looks like you managed to set your clock right. Everybody set their clocks right. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did. She doubled down. She doubled down. Um, all right. So. Before we get into um, Trump's speech yesterday, which I got to tell you, after watching Donald Trump for and covering Donald Trump for the last, what, seven or eight years, and I've watched pretty much every time he's opened his mouth, it's really, really difficult not to watch his speech so that I can watch it live and, you know, react live with you guys and not have, you know, pre preconceived uh, jokes or, you know, stuff to say. I, I really want to make it. Am I losing weight? No. I mean, hopefully not. I don't think so. I think I've been the same weight since I graduated high school. <laughs> right around 190 pounds. <laughs> but but thank you for being concerned. I do appreciate it. Um, maybe it's because I was drinking Fiji water. I don't know if that helps. Uh, but thank you to the 220 people that are in here right now. Tim Scott already coming in. Coming in hot, Tim Scott. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Um, we've already made the decision here that I'm not going to show you guys ads, whether or not we get to that point. I know that's a long way away, but I've already made the decision that I'm literally just going to basically rely on your, your, you know, your love and passion for politics and, you know, your, your generosity. And, and that's how we're going to keep this channel going. So just want to make sure you guys know that, that I, I don't intend on, you know, stuffing you with ads or anything like that. So let's keep it, let's keep it natural. Um, anyway, what, what I was saying, uh, yeah, it's very tough not to watch the speech. So, um, I didn't see any clips of it. I managed to dodge them on Twitter. Um, so we'll get into it soon before we get into that. I do want to, um, just go over one thing and I know it's going to be tough here. <laughs> So my cousin and her partner the other day, <clears throat> I knew this was gonna happen. All right. Uh -uh. My cousin and her partner had beautiful baby twins the other day. Uh, Sydney and Adelaide. Uh, unfortunately, one of the babies that had a stroke. Fuck. Um. So, if you guys could just send your, you know, positive thoughts, I would appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Um. I can't imagine going from the joy and happiness of having, you know, beautiful twins and then going straight into the, you know, how scared you would be. Um, so if you guys could just, again, two shows in, I'm already crying. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to make sure that uh, we were sending them some some positivity and some good thoughts. Um, last I heard, they did stop the 
the bleeding in the brain and but unfortunately they don't know what damage has been done uh, so keeping our fingers crossed anyway <clears throat> sorry all right <clears throat> all right I'm sorry. Let's get into it. I do apologize. <clears throat> All right. So what we're going to do is look at this asshole basically just <laughs> spin his wheels again. All right, here we go. That's a stage. Thank you for the love. I do appreciate it. You guys are the best. Um, I don't mean to drop that on you right in the beginning, but I had to get that off my chest. Definitely something that I've been thinking about and worried about. So I know everybody here is really close, and a lot of people are, you know, from different chats and different YouTube channels on here, and they know each other and they've talked to each other and they communicate on and off chat. So if we could just keep that family vibe going, I I, I would appreciate it. <clears throat> um, all right. So Donald Trump was in Rome, Georgia, <clears throat> which let's just say, <laughs> needless to say, is Marjorie Taylor Greene's district. I don't think anything further than that needs to be said. Um, so <laughs> when you look at the people that are attending these things, you can definitely tell he for as long as he's been doing these things, picks the right areas that he knows he will be well-received, let's just say. All right, so let's get into it. Let me know uh, when it starts, if you can hear it. Let me know if everything looks all right, sounds all right. Sorry about that. I am sorry. But um, I think it's it's important that we you know send some positive vibes, and I, I think that will help. All right, let's get into it before I get choked up again. Here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> the seven minute walkout. Here we go. Seven minute walkout. Yada, yada, yada. You know what? I'm not waiting. I'm sorry. I'm not waiting. Not happening. Not happening. He talked for almost two hours here, so we're going to have to get right into it. All right. Here we go. Donald Trump, Rome, Georgia. Being American patriots, you are amazing. You built this country. You built this country. This has been a tremendous week for our movement. We won big on Super Tuesday. Even though you lost Vermont and Washington, D.C., and somehow only managed to get between 60 and 70 percent of your party's vote. Again, the same party that you won with 90 to 96 percent of the party's vote before. So. Uh, how you're touting this as a win and how you could even possibly think to spin this as something positive is beyond me. And obviously behind the scenes, the people that are working with him know what the fuck is going on. He's just got a bunch of yes men and they're afraid to tell him. He thinks he's actually doing well. They call it Super Tuesday for a reason. We want to think. And now we're just days away from officially clinching the Republican nomination for President of the United States of America. Gross. Fucking gross. No human on earth has done more to degrade the office of the President of the United States of America than this motherfucker right here. Nobody. Nobody. I want to thank the millions of incredible supporters whose hard work and devotion have led us to this incredible moment in history. You know, this is a movement the likes of which this country has never seen before. And hopefully we'll never fucking see again. Please. Please. No, no movement even close. And to all Americans, whether you are a Republican, an independent, or a disillusioned Democrat, of which there are many, 
All you had to do is watch that horrible State of the Union. That was the worst president in history. Making it was the worst president in history. In the worst State of the Union speech in history. How? how it's literally not possible to get that fucking result from what we saw from Joe Biden. And listen, again, I'm not wearing Joe Biden underwear. I don't have a Joe Biden fucking flag hanging out. I am 100% behind the man. But again, I don't worship politicians. Um, and I will say that I think it was absolutely one of the better speeches that I've seen him give. Just putting it out there. And I don't think that anybody with a brain and two eyes and two ears could come out with anything different from that. I'm sorry. And the best part about the whole fucking thing is how long it took for him to get to the stage. You know, every second of that was killing the Republicans. I mean, just shaking hands with everybody left and right. Everybody loves Joe. Everybody wants a picture with Joe. RSBN even said on this broadcast, they talk about how Trump, when he did his State of the Union, just walked straight down to the stage, shook a couple hands, and that's it. That's because nobody likes you, motherfucker. Nobody wants to shake your dirty, grubby, fucking wiping your, your diaper ass hand. Nobody fucking wants that. Sicko. But if you're a disillusioned Democrat, of which there are many today, I extend an open hand, an open invitation, and I ask you to... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Ton of Democrats jumping at that fucking opportunity. Yep. You have a better chance of Greg Abbott jumping at that than you do a Democrat. To join us on the noble quest of <laughs> saving our country. I am wearing Joe Biden underwear. Oh, shit. I mean, <laughs> more power to you. I mean, to each his own, you know? I, I no, no judgment. This is a no judgment zone. But I just was describing myself. <laughs> country. Saving our country. Together, we will turn the page forever on the miserable nightmare of the Biden presidency. What? 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 Did the fucking teleprompter stop? Or did somebody just put too many spaces in between the words on that one? The fuck was that? Nightmare of the Biden presidency. <laughs> this fucking guy. He's got the best words. Best words. What a presidency. What a president. The most incompetent president we've ever had. And I hate, I'm sorry. I know I keep stopping it. And I, I do apologize. But doesn't it make him look like an asshole when he says that Joe Biden's incompetent, yet he's done far more, passed far more legislation, and done more for the American people than this guy ever could have possibly imagined he could have done? I mean, doesn't that make you look like a fucking asshole? Again. When he lost the election, Joe Biden's running from the basement. Okay, then you lost to a guy that ran a fucking presidential campaign from a basement. Okay, you look like a fucking schmuck. The worst president, the most incompetent, and the most corrupt. Other than that, I think he's doing actually quite a good job. And we will make America great again. A little early for that, huh? What, what how would they sneak that one in real quick? He's already repeated himself twice. Now he's got his tagline coming in there in what the first fucking four minutes. Two nights ago, we all heard Crooked Joe's angry, dark, hate filled rant. Uh, there's 420 people in here. Just wanted to point that out 420, 420 people. Four. 420. All right. Of a State of the Union address, wasn't it? Didn't it bring us together? Remember, he said, I'm going to bring the country to, 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 together. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Oh, so he's going. Oh, so it's another, uh, it's another making fun of the dis disabled uh, uh, journalist moment here. We got. I mean, come on.
well, I mean, we all we all know the one thing you don't do is make fun of somebody with a fucking disability, okay? Literally just the lowest blow. Something that they can't change. Something that they have no fucking control over. I mean, if he didn't speak for two hours, I'd play the clip of where, he, I mean, you've all seen it, where he makes fun of the, the, the disabled journalist. I mean, that should have been the end of his fucking political career right there. But no. And he does it again. How, I mean... Does he really keep going with this? It filled rant of a state of the union address. Wasn't it? Didn't it bring us together? Remember, he said, I'm going to bring the country to, 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 together. Wow. Get the fuck out of here, you fucking grubby motherfucker. What a dirty, nasty, stankity motherfucker. I mean, come on, right? I'm pretty good at being an asshole, but even I know. I mean, I've changed enough in my life to know that that's fucked up, right? I mean, come on. Whether I mean, if there's any trolls in the chat, which, welcome, I appreciate it. Just, you're more than welcome to hang around and listen and, you know, learn actual facts and let me point out actual things that he's saying that are completely fucking untrue. Let me point out in ways in which... Uh, uh, a human being with any sense of fucking dignity wouldn't speak like this with any sense of fucking humanity, with any sense of respect for other fucking people, with any care in the world for anybody but him fucking self. They wouldn't talk like this. I'm sorry. Just wouldn't fucking happen. But welcome. No fucking hate speech. Don't be fucking, you know, you know the rules. Mel, you're good at it. Fucking keep them in check. I'm going to bring it together. No, no. He's a threat to democracy. I will tell you, he's a threat to democracy. Weaponized government, weaponize the FBI, weaponize the DOJ. He's a threat to democracy for other reasons also. Number one, he's grossly incompetent. Joe Biden gave the most divisive, partisan, radical, and extreme speech ever delivered by a president in that chamber. Not even. What? How do you fucking come? How do you come away with that? Isn't that's exactly what they said when Joe Biden did the ah shit I forget when it was but he had the red background with the fucking Marines behind him and, and they were saying the same thing then so is he is he is he sleepy and incompetent or is he fucking fiery and you know leading some sort of uh, <laughs> leading some sort of charge in this country I mean you you can't have it both ways is he in the basement or is he on the front lines you know creating havoc with his you know too much energy uh, you know just the fucking the hypocrisy is just beyond me and i posted something to twitter where uh early in the broadcast so what i did is i watched the pre-broadcast um and then when trump came on i just i didn't watch it anymore but i like listening to the two idiots that they have broadcast in there and they actually brought on a third woman um but brian and shit i always forget her name because why would i take up any space in my head with her fucking name anyway what they were talking about is the border the woman says, Joe Biden needs to close the border. Brian then says, you know, we had absolutely illegal immigration coming into Donald Trump, which good for him to admit, and it's impossible to stop it. And then she says, yes, you, it is impossible because they'll just dig tunnels and yada, yada. It's like, oh, what the fuck? You, so you want Joe Biden to close the border and two seconds later, you, you, you admit that it's impossible to do so. I, like, am I twilight zone? Hello? What? Even close. Rather than trying to bring our country together, he tried to cling to power by tearing our country apart. He's done nothing. You know what their whole thing is going to be? Go ahead. He's done nothing. You know, I really should have my aunt who watches the show. And if you're watching, hi, Aunt Teresa, how are you? Um, told me that I should have like a Katy Perry whiteboard type thing with all of Joe Biden's achievements, all of the stuff that he's passed, and we can just go line by line calling out his bullshit. Unfortunately, I don't know how it's going to work with the green screen, but we can figure it out. Auntie Teresa, I love you. Go after Trump. Go after. We have no policy. We didn't do anything. Everything we did turned out so badly. Go after Trump. And we're ready for it. Are we ready? Yeah. We're ready. I love when they 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 hate on Joe Biden when he does that, you know, 
does a whisper and he goes really low with his voice, but Trump does it every fucking speech. <laughs> Crooked Joe Biden talked about Ukraine before he talked about America. He talked about the size of a Snickers bar, you know. Yes, and then explained in depth what he was talking about when he mentioned said Snickers bar. I mean, he didn't just say the Snickers bars are small nowadays and we're moving on. <laughs> he explained shrinkflation, a real problem when corporations, when 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 you have uh, uh, recordings of, of CEOs behind the scenes talking about how when inflation is up, that's the time for them to strike because they can raise their prices and they know the American people on the whole are not educated enough on how the government works and they're just going to blame the president because they think somehow Joe Biden sets the price for fucking Lay's potato chips. It's probably true about Snickers. They throw a little bit less in. I'd probably... It is. I mean, it's a fact. Go buy a bag of chips right now. You fucking... There's more air in there than chips. You can take those to the bottom of the sea, and if you run out of fucking air in your tank, you just stick your face in a bag of chips, you'll be all set for a couple hours. Probably do the same thing if I owned that particular company. But can I be honest with you? Right, right. He'd cheat the American people, too. Basically, what he just said, I would cheat the American people, too, if that was my company. Awesome. Who the hell cares about That's not what the problem is. That's not what the problem is. Somebody in the chat was mentioning, somebody said they'll miss Katie Porter. Did I miss something in the news? Hit me up in the chat. Am I missing something? Anybody? Somebody? Am I behind on the chat? Maybe I am. I'll play this until I catch up. Getcha. That's not what the, you don't talk about Snickers. You talk about inflation, big league inflation, not that kind of stuff. You talk about the fact that we're no longer energy independent. We we're going to be energy dominant. You talk about. He throws around these words like they actually fucking mean something. Energy dominant, energy independent. The fucking fact of the matter is. Right now, even though it's against what he said he was going to do when he was running for president, we are drilling more and producing more oil than ever before. And yet somehow using less fucking rigs to do so, thus creating less havoc on the environment. Go fucking figure. So in one way, it sort of is what Joe Biden was talking about when he was running for president. And on another hand, it is the opposite. But you you have to do what's right for the country at the moment. So things have to change. People have to change. Minds have to change. I mean, it, anybody that stays the same for their whole life, you're not learning. You're not growing. And it's just that's just the fucking fact of the matter. Hey, bigger things. We talk about the whole country as a, as opposed to the kind of things he took. He didn't. I think he took. Uh, Katie Porter is not running for re-election after losing bid for... Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Sorry, my bad. Shouldn't have known that. My fault. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mark. 41 minutes before he got to the border, and then he covered it almost not at all. Uh, the border is the biggest problem. I think it's one of the biggest problems, did the I? greatest... Th <laughs> did, did I say Katie Perry? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Katie Porter. Or Katie Perry. Whatever. She. Whatever. She's... Yeah, cool. Threat to the history of our country. So it took him 41 minutes, and then he announced a plan to send our brave U.S. military men and women into Gaza to resupply the terrorists of Hamas. You know what's going to happen. Uh, I must have, I you know, I must have missed that part in the speech where he said he was going to resupply Hamas. I, I don't I don't I don't recall that. I don't you recall that? No? You recall that? Well we don't recall that. <laughs> he wants to build uh, billions and billions of dollars. He wants to build billions and billions of dollars. A pier, a nice pier going way into what happened to the environmental impact statement. Last time I wanted to build a pier. It's a fucking mulberry. Just like they did in World War II. Just like they set up in fucking World War II. 
basically same premise. Why this guy thinks it's going to be so fucking difficult, I don't know. They literally do this shit in 1940. Here, they tie you up forever, right? There's no tying up. But here's the problem. Uh, the bad guys will take over that pier and they'll take every ounce of food and everything else and then they'll sell it to people that have no money and that it was intended for. Wait, what? Problem. Uh, the bad guys will take over that pier and they'll take every ounce of food and everything else and then they'll sell it to people that have no money and that it was intended for. How do you, how do you sell shit to people with no money? How do you, what? Oh, one more time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here's just, the problem. Uh, the bad guys will take over that pier and they'll take every ounce of food and everything else and then they'll sell it to people that have no money and that it was intended for. <laughs> what? Is that a sentence? I, what? I, what? I don't, like, is that a complete thought? I don't even know what the fuck that means. We have the stupidest people. Yeah. Speaking to us right now. Uh, uh, they're all located in Rome, Georgia at some fucking shitty arena that used to hold fucking rodeo events, I'm sure. Bunch of them. What'd you say? What'd you say? And that it was intended for. We have the stupidest people. <laughs> Why don't I have drops? I need to get this fucking thing going. I got one too. I got a deck. I don't know what you do with it or how it works. You plug it in and it lights up. It looks good. But I'm fucking useless after that. But that should be a fucking drop somehow. <laughs> that should be a fucking drop. In the history of our country, running things. These are stupid. These are stupid people. I'd, I'd like to use a more sophisticated word, but... You know. I don't know any. <laughs> I'd like to use a more sophisticated word. <laughs> no, there are uh. some words that just go, these are stupid people. Joe Biden should not be shouting angrily at America. America should be. Now he's tone policing. <laughs> now he's fucking tone policing Joe Biden. Don't be shouting. Don't whisper. Don't shout, but don't whisper. Don't stutter or whisper or yell. But anything other than that, if you can keep it in that range of not whispering, yelling, or stuttering, then we're good. Other than that, you're fucked. would be shouting angrily at Joe Biden. Thank you to the 616 people that are watching right now. Please make sure you hit the like button. Please share this. Subscribe. Uh, check out the, the merch on the site. Check out Get Them Shirts. Check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Boston Brian. I do appreciate you guys. I know I'm really terrible at self-promotion, like one of our other favorite creators on this app that we love. But um, I, I, I know you guys... I know you guys are here to help. I know you guys are here to learn. I know you guys are here because you care. So I appreciate it to all 628 people. I do appreciate it. And we should be saying, Crooked Joe, you're fired. Get out of here. You're fired. You're incompetent. He's bringing that back. That's what he's bringing back. Oh, Jesus. You're incompetent. Get out of here. You're destroying our nation. Get the hell out of here. You're destroying our country, Joe. He doesn't have a clue. He doesn't even know. He doesn't know he's destroying it. He has no clue. He's got no clue, yet he somehow delivered a, 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 a speech that was way too fiery in rhetoric, that was way too passionate, uh, that was you know basically him yelling at the American people, so, so he says. Yet he doesn't know. I looked pretty fucking. He looked pretty lucid to me while he was walking down there talking to people. He looked pretty lucid when he looked at fucking Marjorie Taylor Greene like she was a fucking alien from Mars. She looked like a fucking, like I said in the finest touch video. She looked like a fucking thirty-two foot sea ray at a fucking Trump boat parade. I mean, at the State of the Union. I mean, last time she dressed up like a what a snow bunny, and then she had the 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 red balloon like the spy balloon. She's a joke. She is an absolute joke he has no clue like 
Whoa, Peter. God damn, man. You are just literally single-handedly keeping me alive, brother. Thank you so much. Uh, anybody that wants a membership, Peter is just uh, uh, apparently the most generous man on the planet. Um, so I do believe there's somewhere down in somewhere in, in one of these regions around here that you can, uh, you know, click a button and get one of these memberships. And and thank you so much, Peter. Um, literally, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. I, I wish there was more words. I wish I could come up with a more sophisticated word. <laughs> But uh, um, literally, thank you so much. I, I, that, that's awesome. With the, with the documents hoax, how about that? He's not competent to stay in trial, but he's allowed to be the president. Okay, figure that one. We don't. Not what they said, but I'm sure he's going to misrepresent that for the entirety of the campaign as well. Um, I do believe that the gentleman that wrote that is going to be in front of um, one of the committees. Uh, I do think that Jim Jordan said, or uh, James Comer said that they were bringing him in to speak. So I'm, I'm curious um, and excited to see what the Democrats on the, on the committee have to uh, say to him about what he wrote in the most unprofessional fucking summary that you could possibly think of, especially when it pertains to the president of the United States of America. We don't think he should be standing trial because he's not competent. But as far as being president, that's okay, right? Figure that one out. I think we'll be taking that one on the campaign trail a little bit. You think? Thank you, Carl. Appreciate you, my dude. Thank you so much. One of the OGs. OG Carl strikes again. Let's go. Happy. <laughs> Only in America can this happen. With your vote. I'm not even just that's just ridiculous because as we all know, all other countries uh, on the planet at the moment are running smooth sailing. But we are going to win the state of Georgia in an epic landslide. <laughs> and, and by the way, I have to tell you that, you know, I've done it twice. We did great the first time, 2016. We did much better the second time, like not even. I mean, if you call losing Georgia uh, better, um, then yes. I mean, if you just want to totally do away with fucking the meaning of words, then yeah, you did, you did better. You did better. <clears throat> you didn't win. <laughs> but, you know, you did better. It's good. Keep, keep it going. Even close. And it was rigged. It was rigged, but there has never been the spirit that I've seen. Uh, man, you know what? I could have sworn that Politico had an article, or was it Axios? I believe it was Axios, excuse me, that said, uh, you know, Trump's rhetoric is, is toned down. Uh, he doesn't seem to be bringing up the election of 2020 anymore. I'm sorry, Axios. It did Are much better the is anybody from time, Axio, like not even Axios close. watching? I, and I it was rigged. It. it was rigged. You know, if anybody's watching from Axios, make sure you're paying attention to what he's saying. Here. Better the second time, like not even close. Because why? And it was rigged. It was rigged. But there has never been the spirit that I've seen this time. Thank you, Woody. Appreciate it. 2016 was great. 2020 was better, the spirit. But it, this blows it away. We came in from the airport. We're 15 minutes away. The lines of people standing along the streets coming up to this building are incredible. Right. RSBN had a camera outside. They actually set up like a TV, like a like a fucking projection screen outside, so people could watch it. You could you could look up the videos yourself. Not many not many people at all. I've seen more people looking at a car accident on the fucking highway. On November 5th, the curtain closes on Crooked Joe's corrupt reign and the sun rises on a brand new day for Georgia and for America. <laughs> Do 
does anybody actually think that Donald Trump wrote that line? Get the fuck out of here. By far the most disgraceful part of Joe Biden's disservice is the divide. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it, man. Divisive and angry speech, which so, so angry. Our great first lady said, I think he's very angry. You know why he's angry? Because he doesn't know what he's doing. You know, it's funny, though, because in order you in order for you to be able to hear what your wife says, you, you need to be in the same fucking room, which we all know never fucking happens. So right off the bat, I'm calling bullshit on that one. <clears throat> screaming, screaming and then coughing. Ah, wow. And he's always using the right. Screaming and then coughing. Ah, wow. <laughs> and he's <laughs> oh, come on. That's a meme. That's a meme with his hand like that up to his mouth. I'm sorry. That is a fucking meme. Hold on. How do I do this? Can I make it bigger or am I just going to fuck everything up here? Let's try this. Yes. <laughs> this is a meme. Somebody clip this. Somebody fucking record this. If you're good at making memes, which I am not, this is your moment. Screaming, screaming, and then coughing. Ah, wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He does it to himself. Oh my! One more time! One more time! Oh, Tony! So He's doing screaming, screaming, and then coughing. Ah! Wow! Oh, Jesus Christ. Hi, Kush Queen. How are you? Great name, by the way. That is too much. That is too much. <laughs> Hal's going to be all over that. He's good at that shit. I suck at it. If I knew how to do something, I would. <clears throat> I really would. That is just too good. All right. One more time. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's doing he's screaming, screaming, and then coughing. Ah, wow. <laughs> and he's always using the right hand. He shakes his hand. Oh. Oh, I love doing this with you guys being here. It's awesome. Thank you. Almost a thousand now. Holy shit. Thank you guys. Oh, JD, let's go. Let's go, guys. You know, I, I, to be on this side of it, like, you know, I love going on Hal's show. I love making videos for Midas Touch. But to be on this side of it and to be receiving, you know, the generosity and the love and, you know, laughing along with you and, you know, crying, obviously, in my second show. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's a totally different feeling. And it's, it's, it's really amazing that, um, you know, 767 people would just even take a second to come watch me look at this asshole. So thank you very much. Uh, Tobias, thank you for the 10 gifted. You're the best, man. Uh, literally, I don't think there's a better community on any social media platform that you will find um, than, you know, the sparklers, the Midas Touch community, um, you know, people that maybe not affiliated with either but have seen me somewhere. It's just, we are all, I mean, look at how everybody gets along in the chat. Um, 
it's just it's a it's a special thing. So I'm not I I don't take it for granted is 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 what I a long way of saying I don't take it for granted. Then he gets off the stage. Did you notice nobody wanted to right. shake his hand? Hold on. How do I get big again? Fuck. I'll learn. I'll learn. There we go. Let's go. <laughs> Fucking learning on the fly. I wouldn't say. I'm a great American, but I don't know if I want to go there. Now, he's always coughing into his hand, and that's it's not a real cough. It's a nervous habit. It's got to stop. That's because it was. It's not a real cough. Dr. fucking Donnie Trump at your service. <laughs> what the fuck? No real cough. He just goes. <coughs> <laughs> Again. Is that the same? Did I rewind? Is that the same one? Or did he do it twice? Don't tell me he did it twice. Don't fucking tell me he did it twice. Is that? I'm. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no, Donnie. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's because there was no real cough. He just goes. <laughs> he did. He did do it again. And then you turn to fake news CNN. Oh, their light just went off. Their light just went off. Bull shit. Bullshit. I, how people, they're there. The people are literally there. They can turn around and see whether lights are off or on. They. <laughs> It's insane. It's insanity to me. It's insanity. They don't, they just, why would they go off? Why? Why the fuck would they go off? Why would they go off? Right then. Why? Zero fucking reason. The red light just went off. What do you think of that, Jim? Damn it. That's my fault. I waited too long. I hit, you have to hit them fast before they can turn it off. No, just one off. That's all right. And they'll say the speech was brilliant, not since FDR. You know, FDR was a great orator. Beautiful. He was a great orator. He was a great orator. Brilliant, not since FDR. You know, FDR was a great orator. Beautiful. Tone, beautiful. It was born at a very beautiful tone. <laughs> I'm sorry just to laugh, but I mean, I know there's like things to critique. Come on, man. How the fuck? Literally, how the fuck did this man become president of this fucking country? Very patrician area, to put it mildly. Very rich, very well. What? He's bought at a very patrician area, to put it mildly. Very rich, very patrician, beautiful accent, beautiful words. He was a great speaker. And they said, not since FDR has a speech been so beautifully delivered. Do you believe this? No, do you believe this? Yeah, I mean, I was going to, I was going to critique. Is that? Am I missing that? Am I? Is he saying that right, or am I just not? Do I just not know what Patricia? Am I missing a word here? I wanted to go after it, but I have no fucking idea. <laughs> like I don't want to look like an asshole if it's a real word. I've never heard it. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Thank you to everybody watching on Twitch, Instagram, Twitter. I appreciate it. I don't know. I can see if it's a if it's a Twitch, but I don't know if I can see anybody from. Uh, Twitter or uh, Instagram, but thank you if anybody's watching. Doubt anybody is, but we'll see. But no, yeah, I don't know what that. I'm not sure what that fucking word. I don't know. I don't know. I think Marjorie believes it because she was there. She saw. Marjorie also believes that fucking wildfires were started by uh, Jewish space lasers uh, from the Ross <laughs> from the fucking Rothschilds. I mean, uh, she also believes that. Um, you know, Muslims and anybody that wears a hijab should be in American politics. She said that before. She believes a lot of shit. So I wouldn't really go to her necessarily as a great example of something to point out because she believes it. Just saying. So, it's incredible. That DNC, I tell you what, I'll tell you what, you take a look at 
MSDNC, how evil they are. They're evil. They're sick. They shouldn't even be allowed to do what they do because it's so corrupt. Oh, right, right. Shutting down the free press. Not fascist at all. They shouldn't be allowed to do it. They are fighting me. And to think that I had the... Literally the fucking point of the media. Or let's say one of the major fucking points of the media. Is to try to keep you assholes in check. So you don't do exactly what the fuck you're doing and come in and try to threaten and shut down the fucking free press because they said something bad about you, because they write articles, because you fucking uh, uh, rapes somebody and then defamed the woman that you raped. Um, it just, I don't know, how? And I liked, uh, I saw Nancy Mace on, I believe it was, was it NBC? CBS? Um, and she was getting questioned about how the fuck she could support somebody that has been found uh, liable by a jury and a judge of raping a woman and then found liable uh, by a jury of his peers and a judge of defaming the woman he raped. Uh, because Nancy Mace, um, unfortunately, um, has a, uh, a, a story about her past in which she was uh, raped. So you think if anybody would have... Um, you know, the wherewithal and the compassion and the, you know, the line of sight to see who you should follow and who you shouldn't follow. It would be somebody that went through something as traumatic as that. But the cult is strong. That's the whole point of these things is just you, you, you throw everything to the back burner. Everything in reality goes to the side. You don't, nothing matters, but the fucking, but, but focusing on, on, you know, the, the, the leader of the group and making him happy and, you know, sending a, a so-called billionaire money so he could pay for his legal fees. Tell me how that fucking works. Why would you do that? The apprentice on it. Oh, thank you, Jess. I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. You guys are the best. NBC and I did so great for them. I said before the election, long before I started the I said, well, one thing for sure, I did so much I made so much money for NBC. They hadn't had a number one show in years. They were dying. Like, when did it become commonplace or allowed or, you know, uh, just the norm to talk about a fucking reality TV show in your presidential campaign speeches? Like, he's running, let's not fucking, let's not lose sight of what the fuck these people are running for, okay? He is running to be the leader of the free world. He is running to be president of the United States of America. The most prestigious fucking position that you could possibly think to have with arguably the most responsibility that you could possibly have. And he's talking about the fucking apprentice. Come on. And that idiot Jeff Zucker was running it poorly. He was running it to the ground. And I came on. Right, 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 Adam. Correct. Where'd you, where, where'd you go? Right here. Correct. He, you know, if you were a billionaire, right, 91 million, Elon Musk probably has that in the fucking cup holder of one of his Teslas. Uh, uh, Jeff Bezos has that in one of his fucking uh, uh, leather shoes. They, they wouldn't give a shit about $91 million. They've lost more money than that. They've literally misplaced more cash than that. I can guarantee you. Elon Musk, what, didn't he lose like fucking $100 billion or some shit? And he's still the richest man in the world? Like, if you're a billionaire, if you're an actual fucking billionaire, $91 million is not going to affect you. I'm sorry. You would not be complaining and bitching and moaning and trying to fucking work up funds from your fans if you could fucking, if you were a billionaire. $91 million. I'm sorry. That's fucking asinine. Come on, and I gave them ratings ooh, like ooh. they haven't had in years. Hey, Osha? And when I said, I'm going to leave hey, the show Ali, now, on, they wanted me to extend. Instead, they got Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, WC, CBS News from 2015 Entertainment. Donald Trump officially fired the, quote, Celebrity Apprentice August 13, 2015, 2014. Donald Trump has officially been fired from the Celebrity Apprentice. NBC's Entertainment Chair Bob Greenblatt announced Thursday while at the Television Critics Association press door that this would not be back the next season, but will return in the future with a new host. 
Well, first off, Alyosha, I do appreciate you being here and watching. Um, that's pretty cool. I do. I, that's awesome that you. Uh, second of all, there's no way he'll ever admit ever that he was fired from that. He just again, you hear him. He's talking about how much how much money he made for the uh, <laughs> for for the company. You know. No, Brian. What he's running for is trying to find a brain, but Trump hasn't found it yet. I, I couldn't agree with you more on that one. He's off to find the wizard. The one oh, was like, what happened is I said, no, I'm going to leave because, boy, are you quiet when you hear this one? Because you haven't heard this before. <laughs> boy, are you bored to fucking death with me talking about The Apprentice? Man, boy, are you shocked that I'm talking about a fucking reality TV show at a presidential campaign speech? Almost sounds like you're shocked. Almost sounds like I shouldn't be saying any of this fucking bullshit. Four. This isn't part of the repertoire. Right? Right, Bert? You haven't heard this one, but you hear how quiet? It's almost like when I do the snake. It's very quiet. Don't do the snake. Nobody wants to hear the snake. It's awful. It's so quiet. You can hear a pin drop, but it's true. I said one thing that's going to happen. If I decide to leave the show and they wanted me to extend, they were offering me three years, five, anything I wanted. I said, no, I'm going to run for president. Don't forget, we did it for 14 seasons. That's enough, right? I'm sorry. But I'm, I I'm sorry. I'm, I'm pretty sure Alyosha just pulled up an article that said you were fired from that broadcast. Like, let me, can I, just one more time. What, what was that you said you did? You, you chose what? I decided to leave the show and they wanted me to extend. They were offering me. One more time. One more time. It's so cool. You can hear a pin drop, but it's true. I said one thing that's going to happen. If I decide to leave the show and they wanted me to extend, they were offering me three years, five, anything I wanted. I said, no, I'm going to run for president. Don't forget. It's, it's the same. That's that's almost the same. You know, uh, uh, contract extensions and being fired. I could see where you would, you could possibly mix that up. I mean, who hasn't really when you've been fired from a job, if anybody has, um, you know, just gone in and said to everybody, they wanted me to stay. They actually offered me a contract extension. Yet somehow I don't, I'm not employed there anymore. Just, that's just, you know, I didn't take the contract. I, I fired myself rather than taking the contract extension with the raise. Makes sense. Total fucking sense. Everybody, I mean, who hasn't been there, right? We, get, we did it for 14 seasons. That's enough, right? But I said, we're going to run. It's hard to give. Yes, good call, Mel. Absolutely, good call. Check out the Benny and Diane show. They're fucking hilarious. Benny, you looked amazing too, all dolled up, you little cutie. Um, but you guys were, were hilarious. Um, sorry, I didn't get to spend more time in there, but the, the, the time I was in the chat, I was fucking laughing. You guys are great and informative too. Benny is like a, uh, uh, a THC dictionary encyclopedia, whatever you want to call it. And I appreciate you guys being here. Every single one of you. You give up prime time and a lot of money, no matter how rich it's a lot of money you make, but you give up prime time television Thursday nights, uh, it was a hard thing to do, but I said, no, I'm going to run for president. And they were so upset and they said, no, no, no. And I decided to do it. And they said, who do you think we should use? How, uh, <laughs> how does everybody he talked to say, no, no, no. I've never heard, like, <laughs> never heard so many people say, no, 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 no. Like everybody, that's how everybody talks to Donald Trump. <laughs> Use, I said, I have no idea. That's your business, not mine. And they said, what do you think of Arnold Schwarzenegger? I said, hey, he's a movie star. Maybe he'll do well. The guy got killed. He couldn't get anything. You know, flies watched. Flies. Flies watched. Flies? And the show was canceled. Remember, they tried Martha Stewart, too. How did that work out? She blamed me. She said it's your fault that she failed doing the. Didn't he like? So didn't didn't he have like some sort of ownership over it too? Like, wouldn't it benefit him if the? I don't know. I could be wrong on that. I don't. I don't know. I could be wrong. If they fired him, maybe he doesn't. But I always thought he had some sort of stake. You know, how no matter how small, uh, in the in that show. So. If that was the case, it would benefit him to have the show do well. I don't know. I said, why? She couldn't tell us why. I don't know. She never figured that one out. But they used her. But they used Arnold Schwarzenegger. Big movie. Oh, thank you, Jess. Appreciate it. Another OG. 
OG Jess, appreciate you. He star, and he failed so badly. Actually, they asked me because I own it with Mark Burnett, right? Mark Burnett's great. And I That's what did he say? I did he just say? Hold on. But they used her. But they used Arnold Schwarzenegger, big movie star, and he failed so badly. Actually, they asked me because I own it with Mark Burnett, right? Mark. Burnett. That's what I. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So he's an idiot. Why does he want the show to fail? Why is he happy at fi that? What? Yeah, great, <laughs> great business, man. Oh yes, got him. Another fucking great business move from Donald Trump. I own stake in the show, but what I really want is for the show to fail. I am so happy that show failed. The one that I have stake in, you know, the one that I lost money over. Fucking unbelievable. Oh, hold on. What do we got? Elio, she's back. January 17, 2017. Some observers filed a defamation lawsuit against Donald Trump arising from a statement that he had lied about his allegations of Trump's sexual misconduct towards her. Servers have been contested of the physical apprentice, which filmed. In 2005, in 2006, Zervos contacted Trump in 2007 about a job offer after the show's completion, and he invited her to meet her at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Zervos said that Trump exhibited aggressive and non-consensual sexual, I'm going to say, behavior. I mean, that, that fits, right? That mocks. That, that tracks. It's about right. And I'm sure there's fucking plenty more out there that, that are unwilling that don't want to come forward, that don't want the attention, they don't want the fucking, you know, the the uh, the threats and stuff. So, I mean, you'll never really know, I guess, but all it takes is one video seeing him dancing with Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, the one video, right, where he actually, like, grosses out Jeffrey Epstein. How fucking disgusting of a statement do you have to make to gross out Jeffrey fucking Epstein? You see the one where he like turns around. He's like, oh, man, obviously Donald said something fucking gross about the girls he was pointing at across the room. The sick fucking prick. Sorry. Ackman, that's great. And I own it. And I, they said, well, you own it. So you would like to have it do well. I said, I would. They said, would you rather? Literally what I was just saying, right? L literally what I was just saying. Have it do unbelievably with our big movie star comes in. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Or would you rather have it fail? I thought about it for a little while, and I said, honestly, I'd much rather have it fail because. Uh, like, great business, man. Whoo, baby. I just don't understand why Trump University failed. Can't see why that did. I just, I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, out of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Good call, Vinny. Good call, Vinny. Holy shit. Was that in there? What chapter is that in, actually? What chapter is uh, 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 sabotage your own fucking companies so they fail chapter? Which one was <laughs> Which one was that? It makes me look better, right? <laughs> right? All right, so I'm not even going to get into that, but because... Because Arnold failed, because Martha Stewart failed, and his show was good for so long, he'd rather have that be the history of it than have the show do well and maybe have people remember other hosts that ran the show uh, and made it popular as well. So that's that's what's going on. He'd rather lose money and have the the, the record, basically, of, of, of having the show do well only with him. Right? I'm not looking for him to come in and top Trump. No, it worked out just fine. He failed. It was like a total disaster. But I did it for 14 seasons. And I said to NBC, uh, you know, I respect you guys. I liked them. I mean, I liked them. But the bosses came up. They tried to talk me. Five guys came up and they wanted to talk with it. Why is he talking about The Apprentice? Why the fuck is he talking about this? He's literally... <laughs> He's talk he literally came out talking about how Joe Biden mentioned Ukraine, rightfully so, in his State of the Union address. And and how he's talking about, you know, and how, I don't, I don't know. I just, come on, guys. Like, at some point, it's, like, hard to put words together to describe. Like, it's, we are in, this is a presidential campaign. And he's just spent the last fucking four and a half minutes, five minutes, talking about the Apprentice reality show. I just can't. They call them suits, but the top suits. The top. 
888 people in here. That's cool. Somebody take a screenshot. I don't think anybody can see it but me, so I'll shut up. Top, top. And I just said, no, I've decided I'm going to run for president. But, you know, you won't win. It's impossible to win. Nobody's ever done that before. There's never been a person that ran for president that wasn't either a politician or a general. I think it's 92% of politicians and 8% were generals. Did anybody? 100% made up fucking facts right there. 100% <laughs> made up statistics right there. So I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Lucky Star coming in with a fiver. Thank you so much. And th again, thank you. Anybody that comes out of pocket with anything, whether it's $5, $2, 99 cents, buy me a coffee. Uh, the Venmo is up in, the, in the, uh, the, the, the top corner of the screen. If you don't have it, if you don't have it, right, if you're supporting other creators, that give you more benefit, that give you more information, that make you laugh more, but you still enjoy this, take care of them. Take care of the other creators. Keep supporting them, right? Uh, that's what we're here for. I'm here to to spread this community out. I want more people involved. So, and I know a lot of people are in a tough spot right now. A lot of people don't have the extra cash. So the people that do the free stuff, like, share, subscribe, comment, uh, you know, put it out on the different platforms. That stuff is just as important to me as... Uh, people that come out of pocket. Um, the only difference is is somebody is in a better financial position, and 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 I appreciate the both camps. So thank you to everybody that's 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 you know helped this show become what it is. Literally, the reason I'm sitting in this chair and I have this equipment is because of you guys. So um, again, thank you. I I know I don't want to make this too long. I, I, I literally I could thank you for two hours. I really could. Anybody know these little facts, these little facts of wisdom? So you had to be a general? This ought to be good. This ought to be good. I guess an admiral and all, but there were no admirals. 8%. There were no admirals? You're absolutely right, Colleen. It is a gift. The Midas Mighty. And again... Not to make this broadcast any longer than it has to be, but I, I mean, I remember when there was what 20, 25 Midas Mighties. Uh, when I could, you know, when they were making little posters of everybody's <clears throat> profile picture on on Twitter, and you could actually see your fucking picture. And then at some point, it became literally millions. Like they're on their way to three million subscribers, which is just unbelievable. Sean, come on, man, let's go. I'm punching my microphone, but that's awesome. You guys are fucking incredible. Unreal. Unreal. I mean, <laughs> I really could jump through this camera and just hug all of you. I can't wait till we have some sort of meetup. I can't wait till Hal puts something together or Midas, you know, the, the Midas Touch puts a, another meetup together. I mean, we got to get together. I'd like to see you guys face to face. Have a couple drinks if you're a teetotaler. We'll have some fucking, well, you can have some water or ginger ale or something, and I'll have drinks. But that would be that would be the real gift for me is, is you know, getting together with you guys and, and, and feeling the, the, the family atmosphere that goes on in this chat, in Hal's chat, and Midas, Midas Mighty's chat. I mean, just to feel that in, in person would be, would be a special thing. All right, sorry, I'm making this longer than it has to be, and I'm rambling. Percent generals and 92, think of that, 92% politicians. I said, I don't care. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to give it a shot. And I announced and immediately went to number one and stayed there for a long time. Remember, I had center of stage. And then I got angry because... Again, 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 again. If you're just fucking joining us, welcome. Welcome to the community. Love to have you. Everybody is very welcome in here. Uh, again, if anybody is new in the chat and you guys notice that they are new, please welcome them. Please, anybody that's donating, please give Sean some love. Uh, please thank them for you know helping this, uh, helping this little show run basically. Uh, but if you're just joining us, this is a presidential campaign speech in which Donald Trump has just spent the last seven or eight minutes talking about uh, uh, foreign policy. He's been talking about the war in Ukraine. He's been talking about the homeless crisis and the housing crisis. And uh, no, I'm lying. He's talking about the fucking apprentice. The, the Apprentice Show. 
the show, the reality show, The Apprentice. That's what he's talking about. If you're just joining us, almost a thousand people in here. Thank you guys. Holy shit. That's fucking incredible. Because I said, no, no, I want to be in the center. I don't want to be tied for the center. Those guys don't come close. So we had to have a different number. So it didn't have to be 10. It had. Hold on. Pin it. Pin it. Hello. I'm losing it. There we go. Quatu Barada Nito. Do I, I no, that thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Can you explain your your name is very unique and I like it. And I'd like to know what language that is. Or am I just being punked and I just said something like uh <laughs> you know, Ben Dover. <laughs> but thank you. Um that I for your first time being here and, and helping me out like that is just goes a long way to show the 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 the, the person that you are. Um and I like knowing that real people are behind these screen names. So again, thank you. It had to be nine or it had to be eleven. It had to be something, but it, it couldn't be an even number. And they got angry at me. I said, No, I'm not gonna do it. So then they ended up doing what I said. But right from the beginning it worked, and then I got on television. And they Slacks. What's up, Slacks? Bryantologist is one of the fucking funniest things. But again, I can't I, I can't say yes or no to it. It has to happen organically. So whatever whatever everybody latches on to for the chat, that's what we'll use again. I, I'm not, I can't be, that's not how nicknames work. I can't approve or disapprove. You guys come up with it and that's what it is. Holy shit. Is fucking house box in the chat right now. Get the fuck out of here. What's up, brother? I appreciate it. What's happening. Happy Sunday. Congratulations on the 66.6 thousand subscribers. Hell, what a fucking moment. I hope you got my screenshot. Uh, we've been waiting for that moment for a long, long time. And uh, it's it's pretty special to see uh, the growth that your channel has had from, um, you know, say 50,000 on has been uh, really special to watch. And again, the people in the in the chat coming from from the sparklers chat um, are just the most loving, caring, uh, appreciative people that uh, that I've come across on on any social media site. So. Thank you for being here, Hal. I do appreciate it. Love to be on the show sometime soon. I'd uh, love to have you on the show sometime soon. And yes, yes, coming to Boston, the sexy liberal tour. What's the day? July? Somebody hit me with the exact date, and I'll put it out there. That's going to be great. I can't wait. Hopefully, I mean, Hal, if I could be a part of it somehow, that would be fantastic. But I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I am more than happy to just sit in a seat and watch because I had a blast last time. Didn't get to spend... I, I wish we could have, could have hung around longer after the show, but it was a it was a long day. But anyway, thank you for being here. I do appreciate it. Hope you and Summer are having a great weekend. Um, tell Chud I said hello. Um, hopefully you're not having to give him too many rides upstairs. Let's go. And they asked me that horrible, horrible question. You remember? And I said, or as Hal says, horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm sorry. That's terrible. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh my dad that's the first question i ever got megan kelly may she rest in peace what did i what did is megan kelly dead no wait um, did i miss that one too hip wait a minute. wait that's what he said right he just said rest in peace why ever got megan kelly May she rest in peace. Did something happen? I am so confused right now. I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to critique that. Did something happen? I'm waiting for in the chat. I'm reading the chat here. I'm reading the chat here. Someone help me out. Someone help me out. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. And anybody that's not uh, maybe following Hal Sparks, if that's in the chat. Make sure you go follow Hal. Um, he is just a fucking a, a, a brilliant human being with uh, a kind soul, a huge heart, and just information coming out his fucking uh, flowing locks. <laughs> He's just a barrel of information. the 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 breadth of conversation you could have with Hal is is amazing, which is which is why I like him. Uh, with many reasons why I like him. Uh, anyway, it, Megan Kelly is okay. He's just being an asshole. I'm assuming because I haven't heard anything. She's fine. Trump is just in the... Okay. All right. That's fucked up, though. I mean...
that's fucked up. Can we agree that's fucked up? That's fucked up. She's sort of making a career by pretending she likes me. And then, so what happened is she asked me that horrible question about women. Horrible. It's horrible. Women love me. You know, I protect women. I protected. I protect. They talk about suburban housewives. And look at that. These are suburban housewives from North Carolina. They followed me. This is their 117th rally. You believe? But the economy. But the economy. Man. Unbelievable. Everybody's broke. Fucking people are on the streets just chewing on their own feet because there's no food in the supermarkets. I mean, you can't even get to the subway. I mean, go fucking try to get to the T in Boston. You'd be climbing over dead bodies the whole time. It's just, it's insane. Um, yet, these people have somehow found the wealth um, and the cash um, to pay for gas to travel around the country. Years, years, and years of traveling around the country to see this asshole. But yet, the economy. The economy. Believe that. 100. I can't believe hell is here. That's cool. That's so cool. 117. I don't know what the hell they're. Oh, and uh, sorry, you're right. Happy belated National Women's Day. Um, I obviously wasn't on on that day, but I just want to pay my respects. Show my love uh, for all the women in the chat. Thank you for, you know, everything that you put up with from us assholes known as men. Um, you really deserve a lot more credit and a lot more respect than you get from um, from a lot of people. And for that, I do apologize and thank you for, for uh, you know, just being great people, um, especially Mel. Thank you, Mel. Uh, thank you for everything that you do. Um, Christ, I'm such a fucking baby, huh? God damn. Anyway, thank you, Mel. Um, you deserve, you deserve everything. You really do. Fuck. Anyway. The husbands are doing, they're home at loan say, is my wife okay? No, I mean. No, you wouldn't know. <laughs> you don't know who your fucking wife is. We're not so far, but you know, when they go out to Texas and California, there's like 40 of them and they look great, but I don't think the husbands can be too happy. Are your husbands happy about this? Are they okay with Yes. Well, you have very nice husbands. Thank you, Kelly. Pleasure to be here, buddy. Well, wait a minute. No, nope. scratch that. Reverse it. Pleasure to have you here. But uh, it was an amazing phenomenon, and, and I do protect women. Look, they talk about suburban. Whoa, okay. Possibly the dumbest thing he's ever said. Possibly, possibly the most inaccurate most ridiculous thing that man has ever said right there that is just wild talk uh, it was an amazing phenomenon and, and i do protect women look get the fuck out of town how did a lightning bolt not strike him at the exact moment he uttered those fucking words how he was found to be liable by a jury of his own peers and by a judge to have sexually assaulted and in the state of New York also considered to be rape, raping E. Jean Carroll. He then went on to defame E. Jean Carroll multiple times and was found guilty of that also. So for him to say, just a few days after National Women's Day, that he protects women is ass. It, it's just there's no there's literally no words for how asinine that is. It's unbelievable. Can imagine? All right, imagine being E. Jean Carroll, as strong a woman as she is, as resilient as she is. If she were to hear him say that, right? Just unreal. Put yourself in the woman's shoes, buddy. Christ's sakes. 
They talk about suburban housewives. I believe I'm doing well. You know, the polls are all rigged. Of course, lately they have. Here we go. That's, that's twice Axios, twice Axios that he's uh, told, uh, said that the 2020 election was rigged. So that's twice Axios. Axios, that's twice now in this speech. In this Axios, that's twice in this speech. Just I'm in rigged because I'm winning by so much. I want to say it. Disregard that statement. I love the poll. Oh, yeah. Just, just disregard. Just disregard. Nobody will ever see this anyway. It's not like I'm running for the fucking office of president of the United States. We'll edit it. Fucking asshole. What did I do? Wrong button. Sorry. Paul's very much. We're beating him by so much. But with the suburban, they always say suburban housewives. They want something that's very important. Security. They don't want illegal immigrants coming into our country. They don't want illegal immigrants. No. Who's they? And since when do we not want anybody coming into our country? Like, when did that become a thing? When did, like, just seal off the fucking borders of the United States become a thing? I don't, it just, when did isolationism come back? I mean, is it going to take another Pearl Harbor, God forbid, to wake everybody up? Is Russia going to have to do something drastic in order for people to wake up in this fucking country and see what the dangers are? I mean, give me a fucking break. Knocking on their front door and saying, I'm going to use your kitchen and I'm going to use your bedroom and there's not a damn thing. And that's when, that's the nice ones, okay? That's the nice ones. What? On their front door and saying, I'm going to use your kitchen and I'm going to use your bedroom and there's not a damn thing. And that's when, that's the. Again, what? <laughs> I don't, even, I don't even know. They don't want illegal immigrants coming into our country. They don't want illegal immigrants knocking on their front door and saying, I'm going to use your kitchen and I'm going to use your bedroom and there's not a damn thing. And that's when that's the. <laughs> Get the fuck out of town. We don't want him knocking on the door and saying, I'm using your kitchen. How the fuck? Oh, my God. We're using your kitchen. Get the fuck out of town, dude. How the fuck? That is unreal. And it's funny, too, because I was watching the... um, uh, What's his face? Fuck, I'm going to forget his name. Nope, I have it written down, so I can't forget it. Walter Masterson, right? He's good. So he goes to... He, he had a video where he went to CPAC. And he was, you know, not being not being combative or any way. He was kind of playing off like he was one of them. And he's talking to the lady. And she was talking about how her main issue with with the situation at the border is is basically what he just said, strangely, is uh, 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 they come knocking on the door. And she, uh, and she was like, well, sometimes they come with lawn mowers. Sometimes they want to do my roof. So, oh, so they want to work is what you're saying. So they, they, they're not coming in to use your fucking kitchen in your bathroom. Basically, what they're doing is they're seeing if you need maintenance on your house and they're providing the fucking service is what, they, is what you're saying. But I got a sign in the window that says no solicitation, please. Go fuck yourself. And she says, I'm not putting it in Spanish. No way. This is America. Unbelievable. Like, that's your fucking main issue? Like, <laughs> that... He was asking people basically what the, you know, how it's affected them. And it's a great question. Great fucking question. I ask it all the time in lives uh, on TikTok and stuff. How has it affected your day-to-day -day life? What happened today that that border had some effect on what the fuck happened? Did you not get a parking spot because somebody took your spot that may have come from Venezuela recently? Uh, 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 did you have to wait in line longer at the fucking, at the supermarket because there was so many immigrants lined up getting fucking food? I doubt it. And you have nothing. And this is what the fucking people come up with. Is, and this is how you know that they're fucking lying through their teeth about caring about the fucking border. That's the nice ones, okay? That's the nice ones. They want safety. They want security. And that's what I provide. I had the safest border in the history of our country. Now we have the worst border in the history of our world. 
So we went out. Sorry, I had myself muted, and I was saying good things, and you missed it all, because I'm shit at this, but what are you going to do? Now I forget what the fuck I was saying. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Stop yelling at me. I, I had it fucking muted because I coughed and shit, like Joe Biden. <laughs> oh, man, I was saying good things. Oh, the border. That's the fucking what I was saying. It's 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 embarrassing. It's weak. It makes you look small. It's pathetic to tote. Uh, 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 the 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 years that a deadly pandemic in this country that killed over a million people, that stopped migration all over the fucking world, as the reason that the border was so secure. Okay, it's embarrassing that you have to bring up that fucking pandemic. That every country basically on earth stopped fucking uh, 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 migration. That stopped people moving. People were locked down in their homes. You didn't do shit, okay? It had fucking nothing to do with you. Did you pass the fucking uh, 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 Title 42? Yes. But uh, Stephen Miller has been dying, was dying to pass that even before COVID. But COVID was just the perfect excuse. So don't give me that fucking bullshit. And I'm sorry that I was muted. That's a rookie mistake and that's fucking... Stupid. Sorry. Now that we did it and we went to number one almost immediately, right? I think immediately. I think the first week or something was, you know, I wasn't. He's still talking about the fucking apprentice, dude. The whole, like, I got, I only got a half hour left. This motherfucker's going to be talking about the apprentice the whole time. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> I don't even know what to do. I'm, keep it. Passing it. I'm skipping it. Number one. With our first lady, who people love our first lady, I want to tell you. They do love her. They do love her. They just wish they fucking could see her or, you know, you know knew she was all right. <laughs> she says hello. We went to no. She says she couldn't be here tonight or at any other event because, strangely, she's always got something booked the night of these events. It's just, it's remarkable how her fucking publicist and the people that do her scheduling just don't know when her husband is going to speak in public at a presidential campaign rally which you know might look good for your first lady to be there but you know who the fuck am i i don't work for anybody's campaign number one and we never we never left and then we had a beat we had a beat i don't call it crooked anymore i use that term for joe joe's crooked and uh, i don't call hillary anything i don't even Absolutely, Kyle. Yep. I mean, that's facts. Like I said, I more than appreciate anybody that does have the ability to to, you know, help produce this show and help keep this going. But this is a this is a uh, no judgment, no fucking forcing people to pay, no ads, no, you know, it's here if you want to. If you don't, I still love you. That's it. That's just the way it's going to be. That's just how it goes. I'm sorry. If anybody has a problem with that, take it up with Somebody that cares. <laughs> I don't even think about her anymore, to be honest. He's talking about Melania? But we went to number one, and then we weren't supposed to win the election, and that's what they hate me for, because I won an election that the Republicans were not supposed to win. They weren't. We weren't supposed to win it. Right, Jim? But we wanted Jim. Jim Jordan knew. Do we love Jim Jordan, by the way? We do love Jim Jordan. We do. Um, unfortunately, several wrestlers at Ohio State don't have the similar feelings as we do. Uh, they might have somewhat different opinions of Jim Jordan based on uh, their experience with the man and, uh, you know, him crying on the phone and begging them not to bring up the fact that he looked the other way when uh, several of them were being molested. But, you know, Republicans. Damn it.
Every day, Joe Biden is deliberately releasing gang members and military aged men into our communities by. How can you say that? Where's the media on this? Where is the fucking news on this? A presidential fucking candidate just said the most bullshit fucking thing he could possibly come up with. He's straight up lying through his teeth about what the president of the United States is doing. Where is the media on this? Why, why is this not being called out? Why is it up to Hal Sparks? Why is it up to me? Why is it up to fucking Tony Michaels? Why is it up to Midas Touch? Why is it up to David Pacman and Jesse Dolomore? Why is it up to LBC in fucking uh, uh, Britain, for Christ's sakes? Why is it up to Bo of the fifth column? Why is it up to us to do this? Why are we doing this? Why is the media failing to do what their fucking job is to protect the people of the United States of America from people just fucking like this? I don't get it. I really don't get it. I don't. Yeah, Luke's good. L Luke's good. He's a little dry for me. I do like Luke. He's a good dude. Good stuff. Not my cup of tea, per se, but I mean, and, and I'll welcome anybody on the team. I really will. Almost, almost anybody on the team, actually. By the tens of thousands, knowing full well that his policies will cost countless innocent lives. I'm not sure he does know, if you want to know the truth, because I really don't. I don't think he's a good person. I don't think he's a nice guy. I think he's a corrupt individual, but I don't think. Yeah, no, no, Luke's good. I'm just saying, like, as far as being able to, um, you know, I mean, you see how I am. I'm a loud, crude Boston guy that swears a lot. So, um, you know, it's just. Some people, some people you can watch all the time, and some people you're uh, you're glad they're on their side, but it's just not your stuff, you know. That's all. Not no no knocking, no knocking anybody here. Like I said, no judgment zone. I don't think, and it has nothing to do with age. I know people from eighty to ninety. I know one man from eighty. He was a loser all his life. Yeah, yeah, and he got 90. rich. Yeah, it's a competence thing. It's it's a competence thing. They got us up. They do the age thing. And they always have me as his age. I'm I am literally blown away right now that there's 930 people watching this. Like, I thought maybe 100, couple hundred at the most. I mean, I see Hal gets, uh, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 2,500 people. So for me to have 926 people in here, I think is it's pretty damn fucking good. And uh, uh, I thank you. I do appreciate it again. I, I I know I'm gonna spend half my my shows thanking you guys, but that's what I'm here for. That's why you guys are here, um, and I want to make sure you guys know that I see you. I know it's it's tough for me to see every comment. I don't see every comment, but don't think that I don't appreciate you guys. Really, uh, yes, Slacks Slacks is the best. Slacks sent me T-shirts. I got a T-shirt. Um, I got a T-shirt from Mel. Uh, he sent me pens. I got pens here. I'm using them right now. He got. He sent me. He sent me the oh oh Christ oh oh everything's going to shit. I dropped everything. That's all right though. He gave me these dungaree dogs, the little pen pads that I've been using, pins, stickers. I mean, Slacks hooked it up. Slacks hooked it up. Like I said, the generosity in this chat is is beyond is beyond anything that I thought that I would get. And I hope that you can hear me because every single one of my wires just fell. <laughs> I'm four years younger. So four years is a lot, but it doesn't matter. They do the age thing to try and get Trump. Let's get Trump. Always, you, They never talk about his competence. He's grossly incompetent. Don't you understand that? The question is whether or not he's going to get to the starting gate. I can only hope. You know, I challenged him to a debate. And he said his, his person, who's really a wonderful spokesperson, his press secretary, how, how good is she? That was a great sentence. You want to try that one again? You want to you take, take two on that one? Yesterday's a hard word. She actually didn't know what to say, but I do. And I challenge him right now. You know, he's at another part of your state where he's really said some bad things today. And Joe Biden was in Atlanta, I believe. Um, and uh, Chewy, thank you for the 10 gifted, my man. That's amazing. Like I said, I just I could literally spend this whole broadcast just thanking you guys for your generosity. And I honestly, I, I will, I will. I mean, you guys deserve it, it, it absolutely. Yep, Elizabeth, Slava Ukraine, Royam Slava.
absolutely. And like I said, if one of these one of these times um, we're going to do an episode, or we'll do multiple episodes, just dedicated to to what's going on in Ukraine. Um, I just I, I think it's important to continue to listen to what this guy is as ridiculous as it is. I know it hurts to hear, I know it hurts to listen to. Nobody likes doing it, but there's no denying that it's important to hear what him and his ilk and his followers are are saying. It really is. So we know what to combat. We know what to come back with. Um, I think it's important. I, I hope that I'm putting some sort of entertaining, funny spin on it that makes it just a little bit easier to 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 swallow. To swallow. Yeah, I got stickers. I do. I got stickers and fucking pins, and I'm going to put them on my car. I'll put them on my, uh, my khakis. Put them on my khakis because those are two different things. And we'll get into that. He said some really bad things. But one of the lives that was taken from us was a incredible 22 year old nursing student right here in Georgia, Lakin Riley. Right? Look at. They're really playing this up. They really are. Let me get this out of the way. Tragic, tragic event, tragic situation. My heart goes out to the family. My heart goes out to the parents. But for the Republicans to now use this, the way that they're using it, as much as they're using it, um, is is really disgusting. And I don't, I I just don't see how the parents would be okay with it. Um, I, I I don't I don't know. It's just for them to harp. I mean, Fox News has been telling this story twenty four seven since it happened. Uh, now Trump's working into his speeches. Marjorie Taylor Greene had all the 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 paraphernalia on, um, and you know, not to say that we don't need to raise awareness to the the struggles and the dangers that women face uh, on, on a daily basis, but um, to politicize it in the way that they have, I think is 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 pretty disgusting. Look at the signs! Wow, 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 <laughs> wow, wow, wow. From the time she was in the first grade, Lakin's dream was to spend her life caring for others. And I met stickers. That's what they are. They're stickers. Her beautiful mother and family backstage, sister, friends, some of her friends, a roommate. They said she was like the best. She was always the best. She was, they admit that she was the best. And she was he doesn't know how to talk about people. In a compassionate way, he just does not know how to come up with the words to describe a human being uh, uh, with 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 details, um, uh, uh, you know, relating to human emotion. He just does not know how to do it. She was the first in her class. She was going to be the best nurse. She was the best nursing student. She was always the best. She was the brightest light in every room. They told me, and she was the whole world to her parents and to her sister. Just uh, to the whole family. Incredible. Then the unthinkable happened. 16 days ago, Lakin went out for a morning jog. She was in great shape. She wanted to keep herself that way. And she never came back. Never came back. They knew something was wrong. An illegal alien criminal who Joe Biden intentionally released into our country. Oh, fuck you, buddy. Fuck you. Go fuck yourself, you motherfucker. You piece of fucking shit. You utter fucking piece of dog shit diarrhea doo-doo. Holy shit. Go fuck yourself. And pardon my fucking French, but that's fucking disgusting. To say it was intentional, go fuck yourself. Please. Make sure. And don't let the fucking door hit you on the way out. He has been, and because he's released... Tens of thousands of people like this, tens of thousands, because you know they come from jails and they come from mental institutions. He released them into our country. Biden has implemented a formal policy that illegal aliens who intrude into the United States are granted immunity from deportation. Thus, when this monster... What? Like... Uh... He says more. No, not going to do it. Showed up, up time. at our border. He was set free immediately under the program that Crooked Joe created. It, I call it free to kill. It's free to kill.
What if this motherfucker just watched his first James Bond movie or something? Could he be any more fucking disgusting? On Thursday night, Joe Biden was confronted over this cruel policy. And what did Crooked Joe reply? And Marjorie, I have to say, you were very brave in trying to bring up a point. Very brave. Very brave. That takes courage. Yes, it does take courage to make yourself look like a fucking asshole at the State of the Union again. It's not easy to do. Stand up and do that. That's not easy to do, Marjorie. We understand that. He got Lincoln's name wrong, calling her Lincoln. No. I'm still not buying it either. I'm still not buying it. When Joe Biden speaks fast, and obviously with his speech impediment, I'm not buying that he said Lincoln. I mean, e easily, easily he could have been saying Lincoln, and you would, I mean, when I say Lincoln, it sounds like Lincoln. See? Can't even tell the difference. So don't give me that fucking bullshit. He held up the fucking pin that said her name on it. I'm pretty sure he knew the fucking name. Mixing her up with the football coach, right? He got the name wrong, Lincoln. And when he asked, what about all the legal citizens who kill people? That's what he said. What about all the legal citizens? When he was asked, what about all the legal? In other words, making excuses, then just... Moments ago, I don't know if you heard because you've all been waiting online for two days. But just moments ago, this was just before coming up. They just told me prior to what I'm doing right now that Joe Biden went on television and apologized for calling Lincoln's murderer an illegal. He didn't want to call him illegal. He apologized. It's because there's no such thing as an illegal human. It's not a fucking thing. OK. If the people have been displaced, regardless of how they cross that fucking border, they have the ability to apply for asylum and they go through the process and they are found to have a, a, a justifiable reason to have left their country and to stay in this one or they are deported because Joe Biden has, as far as I know, deported more people uh, uh, as far as numbers and percentage wise than Donald Trump ever did. He said he should have called him an undocumented, not an illegal, and he wanted to apologize. He wanted to apologize, and, well, they have a new name, too. They have a new name that's even worse. They have a new name. You know what the new name is? Neighbor. They want to call him Neighbor. They want to call him another name. Do They want to call them neighbor. What? What's his next name? Oh, what? Uh, well, I think I know what the fucking next one is. I've heard him say it before. I can't think of it. There, what are they? Uh, uh, newcomers or something like that? He's gonna say. Did you ever hear the other one? Newcomer. That's what happens when you watch Donald Trump's every fucking move for eight years. <laughs> Shortening my lifespan by at least several years following this guy, trying to call out his bullshit at every turn, has cost me just <laughs> severe mental anguish. And then on top of that, following the Ukraine, uh, uh, the, the brutal invasion of, of Ukraine uh, since that started. On top of my studies of World War II, I mean, at some point it it does, it 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 weighs on you. But I mean, I'm here for the long haul. I mean, there's I, I'm I'm not there's no way I'm going to be one of those people that said uh, I didn't do anything, I didn't speak up, I let the fascists take hold, um, I looked the other way. Not going to be fucking me. Not on my watch. Sorry. Uh, whatever it fucking takes. Whatever I have to do. As loud as I can get my voice. That's how it's fucking going to be. A newcomer to our country. Are we are we going crazy or what? Is this country? Yes, yes, yep. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a strong yes for me, sir. Um, confirmed. 
country going crazy? How about that one? Newcomer, the newcomer. No, he was illegal. And I say he was an illegal alien. He was an illegal immigrant. He was an illegal migrant. And he shouldn't have been. And on that point, Hal, uh, 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 Hal says newcomers, what aliens in alien nation were called. Next, he'll be calling them slags. Uh, so what he when he talks about mass deportations, right, he's brought up uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower before. And I know I've talked about this before in several places, but I think it's worth mentioning it again. What he wants to imitate, the, the policy and in, in the, the, the actions that he wants to imitate is an operation called Operation Wetback that happened in the 50s. Okay, and straight off the bat, Operation Wetback, as I've said before, wetback is a, is a derogatory term for, um, for migrants that have crossed the Rio Grande, thus getting their back wet. Um, it's a sick derogatory thing and it's an embarrassment to the united states that we actually had a policy or um any any anything that had that name on it not only that they used military style tactics they rounded up people using military style tactics literally put them in trucks and cages uh uh they, they had uh, uh american citizens were caught up in this so they actually deported american citizens in trucks cages wherever they could and dropped them off into the farthest regions they possibly could fucking find and just dropped them off there. Uh, they also said that they, they deported over a million people. Uh, the studies have found that they deported nowhere near that amount of people. They deported somewhere near 200 to 250,000 people. And in those were American citizens. So if you want to take the chance of having Donald Trump uh, put this policy in place and having American citizens rounded up along with uh, asylum seekers just looking for a better life that uh, uh, the, the United States has some hand in causing in their own country, then, then you know, it, it, it's just, it's, it's amazing to me that people don't understand that. He's literally telling you the fucking, the, the, what he wants to imitate, what he wants to copy. And what he wants to copy is a military style roundup of anybody that has dark skin or, or a Spanish last name or is, is seeking asylum somehow and hasn't gone through the process and waiting for some, everybody doesn't matter. I mean, th just beyond that, think about the fucking logistics of that. Think about what that would cost the United States. How would you find them? How would you round them up? What you may, mode of transportation would you use to, to, to ship them out like cattle? You sick fuck. Sorry, but good point, Hal been in our country and he never would have been under the trump policy correct correct who just said that loquera loquera is 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 100 right when he talks about he wants to have asylum for all police officers guess why Guess why? It goes hand in hand with his fucking mass deportation. He wants the, 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 the police to be able to act like fucking the military so he doesn't have to actually send the military into these cities and towns. He wants the police officers to do it. And when they fucking kill somebody and when they step on somebody's neck or when they beat somebody to death or when they deport the wrong person, they'll have fucking total asylum and there'll be nothing you can do about it. Sound good to you? Doesn't sound good to me. Sorry. And Biden should be apologizing for apologizing to this killer. Joe Biden, and you understand what's happening here. Joe Biden has no remorse. He's got no regret. He's got no empathy. <clears throat> Bull fucking. All right. Sorry. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I might fuck this whole thing up, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go to X, 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 Explorer X. We're going to go to, she was actually on Hal's show. Christ, no, I'm not going to remember her name. Um, somebody hit me in the chat. Who? She's got almost a million followers on Twitter. I'm blanking on her name. She was on Hal's show before. Um Come on, somebody hit me with it. She's got a video that I want to show you that will that will disprove what Donald Trump just said in about fucking 30 seconds. What was her name? Well, no, nope, not Tara. The, she's got blonde hair. Literally got a million followers on Twitter. Joe, it, is it JoJo? Is that what her name is? Might be JoJo. JoJo? Joe. Yes, it is Joe. Yep. Thank you. 
So what we're going to do here, I'm going to scroll down. It might take me a second. Bear with me. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to share this tab instead. And what we're going to do, right, check this out. Oh, this is my son, Braden. Hey, Braden, how are you, of, man? We're here to hear you speak. Oh, man, come on. Hey, I tell you what, it, don't let it define you. You are smart as hell. Oh, you really are. You can do this. Can I get a phone number for you and I can tell you how what I used to do and how I would do it? Can you take us from? Because there's about 25 stutterers I continue to work with. And I can tell you the things that help help me. I know, by the way, the hardest thing is talking on the telephone. So I don't expect you to be able to. When I stuttered, I used to talk talk like, 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 like this. And it took a lot of practice, but I promise you, I promise you you can do it. I promise you. And don't let it define you. You're handsome. You're smart. You're a good guy. I really mean it. Don't let it define you. And you know when I say I know about bullies, you know about bullies. The kids who make fun, it's going to change, honey. I promise you. All right. All right. So you tell me that 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 Joe Biden doesn't have uh, 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 compassion and empathy and doesn't know how to connect with people and doesn't want to help people and doesn't have a good heart. Anybody that says that is 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 either intentionally sticking their head in the sand or they're actively working against the United States of America for whatever reasons. But that that is what a president does. OK, that's what a president should be right there. That little kid now will look up to Joe Biden for the rest of his fucking life. That kid has Joe Biden's phone number. if So he can call him if he has any questions, concerns. Joe Biden said he works with 25 other stutterers. I mean, come on. That's something to be fucking proud of right there. That's something that, that the United States could be proud of to, to, to have or is proud of to have as the, as the president of the United States of America. Not this, not this fucking junk bucket. No compassion, and worst of all, he has no intention of stopping the deadly invasion that stole precious Lakin's beautiful American life. We are profoundly honored to be joined today by the family and loved ones of Lakin and some of her great friends. I met them. They're so incredible. The whole, the whole group is incredible. To Lakin's parents, John and Allison and her sister, Lauren, her roommate, Connolly, and to all of those who loved Lakin, the hearts of hundreds of thousands and indeed millions and millions of Americans. Millions and billions and millions and billions. Americans and people worldwide, they're shattered alongside of your beautiful hearts. We share your grief. The president of the United States took the time to tell a child how important he was and to encourage him. Biden 2024. It's literally as simple as that. Honest to God. These little acts. And listen, you don't see Joe Biden, as far as I've seen, using that in a campaign fucking uh, commercial or an ad or, or touting that in his speeches. Uh, uh, he, he just does it. You know what I mean? It's natural. He doesn't have to think about it. He doesn't have to make it a fucking uh, a, a politicized event. You know what I mean? He doesn't have to take the death, the tragic death of a young woman and turn it into something that he can use along with the border that he's been trying to use, which is why, you know, he instructed MAGA Mike fucking Johnson to kill that bill and they took a two week vacation. I mean, it's plain, it's, it, it's in plain sight. It's right in front of you. You don't have to be uh, 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 hugely politically involved to see it. Unfortunately, there are people that aren't politically involved at all that don't even skim the surface and don't know. What I'm trying to do, what Hal, I'm sure, is trying to do, what uh, 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 everybody else might as touch is trying to do is trying to get those people involved. So trying to make it just a little bit easier to get involved in politics, to see what Donald Trump is saying, to know what uh, Joe Biden, uh, what type of man Joe Biden is. You know, normally you might not do that on a Sunday. Hopefully I can make it so you have something to come here, maybe talk to a few friends in the chat, laugh about a few things, but you're learning along the way. That would be, that's my goal and and, you know. I hope we can just continue to do that. Grief. We share your grief. Thank you, darling. 
we're 50 away from a thousand. If you guys could, anybody that hasn't liked this stream yet, anybody that hasn't shared it yet, if you could do it right now and maybe we'll get up to a thousand on the second show, that would be fucking incredible. That would be nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. I know how tough it is. It's so tough. We vow to keep Lakin's memory alive for as long as we are here on this earth and we take comfort. Oh, please don't let that be much longer. That she is now home with God in heaven. And I want to thank you and thank you. Fucking gross, dude. It is. It's just fucking gross. I'm sorry. Just fucking gross. That's it, how her fucking parents could sit there and let him say that. In, in, you know, he doesn't fucking mean he doesn't know a damn thing about that fucking girl. That's why he's come up with all these fucking superlative. Oh, he's, she's great. She's incredible. He has no idea what the fuck she's about. Thank you for, thank you for being here. Incredible. I know how tough it is. Did you say Lincoln's memory? That she is now home with God in heaven. And I want to thank you and thank you for, thank you for being here. Incredible. I know how tough it is. Incredible. What Joe Biden has done on our border is a crime against humanity and the people of this nation for which he will never be forgiven. That's a very hard thing. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it fast. We're going to have the largest deportation in history. But That's it. I mean, he's telling you. He's not hiding it. He's not fucking hiding it. He wants asylum for the cops. He wants mass deportations. Who does that sound like? Who does that sound like? Who else, who else denigrated and took over the media? Who else denigrated and took over the police forces? Who else created their own security force that then reached their fucking grubby fingers into the entirety of the German fucking uh, 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 society? This is the playbook. Wait a minute. Hold on. Time out. Time out. Time the fuck out. Time out. I've seen it. Uh, ta -ta -ta. <laughs> who said it? Who said, it? hey, this is not going to happen here, Don. I appreciate you being here, but we're not going to we're not going to be talking like that, okay? Because there might be some people in the chat that find that offensive. Um, I'm I'm one of them, um, but there might be some people that have a deeper connection to that. So please let's not and let's not make anybody feel uncomfortable. Um, I I appreciate you being here, and you're absolutely right. That's who I was talking about. But let's let's try to. Let's try to be mindful of, of, our, of our language, please. I know that's rich coming from me, but I, I mean, towards anybody else. What a tremendous shame that this could have happened in our country. What a shame. Lake and Riley would be alive today if Joe Biden had not willfully and maliciously eviscerated the borders. Bullshit. As far as I know, the guy came in from Venezuela. I could be wrong, but wasn't it under the uh, uh, Trump administration? Somebody can correct me in the chat if I'm wrong, and we'll correct that. But as far as I know, it, the guy came in from Venezuela during the Trump administration. Members of the United States and set loose thousands and thousands of dangerous criminals into our country. To her family tonight, I promise you, I will demand justice for Lakin. Justice for Justice. He wants some justice for Lakin. Lakin. Um, I know it's three. Obviously, I'm going to go over. I don't know how much is left in this. Um, Jesus Christ. Well, well I'll get through... <laughs> Holy shit, dude. All right. He's only a half hour into this fucking two-hour thing. So obviously I'm not going to be able to cover the whole thing. We'll get through as much as I possibly can. We'll stay a little bit longer. Mel, if that's okay with you, I know you have something to do. So if you kind of have to head out, um, I, I, I I understand. So, Or if I can't do it without you, then we'll end it. But just let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Incredible. I like, should I skip ahead a little bit, you think? What do you think in the chat? Skip ahead a little bit, maybe catch bullshit at the end. That way we can feel like we finished it. Where are you, Mel? Where are you? There you are, babe. 
I know. You are. And you are one hell of a single mom. The best single mom that I know. Um, you are... D- 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 I don't know. It, it's incredible uh, how much shit that you know how to juggle and keep in control and know how to do because I am shit at so much of it. And it's very impressive to see how you manage um, such a, uh, let's say, a difficult situation. So you appreciate I will fight like no one has ever fought before to ensure that what happened to this American daughter, this incredible, incredible American that this never happens to any other daughter or anyone else ever again. We will do everything we can that it doesn't happen again. And you know it will, because unfortunately, we have so many people allowed into our country that shouldn't be, but we're going to get it down to a trickle. We're not going to let this go on. Our country is being destroyed by an incompetent president. And we're- He needs you to believe that there is chaos everywhere. Okay, because fascism only thrives in chaos. Okay, the fringe parties only thrive if they can get you to believe that you're in danger, if your country uh, is on the verge of crumbling, if your family is under threat, if they think somebody's coming to knock on your door and take your kitchen and fucking piss in your bathroom or whatever the fuck he said. Uh, uh, it's just, it's the only way he can get you to believe that. And the numbers of every single fucking economic a uh, 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 factor that you can possibly look at in the United States right now is positive. He has absolutely no basis, no fact, no numbers, anything behind that statement. Do we have issues? Absolutely. Do we have things we need to fucking t- tackle? Absolutely. Are there things that I wish Joe Biden was doing more on? Absolutely. But I'll be fucking goddamn if I think I'm going to be th- thinking the fascist is going to listen to us and reason with us and fucking hear what we have to say and change his mind on policies and shit. No, Joe Biden will do that. Joe Biden is the only choice that will do that. And we're not going to, we're not going to. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. At least we'll finish out the speech. Um, I'll, I'll, we might miss a little bit, but fuck him. We've heard it all before. Anyway, it's uh, an hour and 56. We'll do another say we'll do from here. How about that? Right, Georgia? Oh, Jesus Christ. How did I do that? Let's get it done. Invite. Where are you? Brian Jack, where are you, Brian? Oh, there he is. Brian Jack. He's tough. He's. Ugh. Makes me sick to hear my name come out of those fucking lips. Smart. He's conservative. He's a fighter. He's a fighter and he's a mega man. Say hello, Brian. Come on. Well, thank you very, thank you very much, Mr. President. I am both humbled. The fuck is this asshole? And honored to earn your endorsement. And as one of your longest serving aides, I know better than most that these call up speeches are best kept short and sweet. He's a, he's a hundred percent right. He is a hundred percent right. Keep it short. All you can say is good things about Donald Trump. Don't take too long and don't mention anything else. Uh, <laughs> that's why when that time when Vivek took the mic for like eight nine minutes, Trump was fucking so pissed. After all, we're here tonight to celebrate the now official Republican nominee for president, Donald J. Trump. oh my god i've never heard it's amazing that people that don't give a shit at all about this country are the ones that somehow manage to chant usa the loudest and the most it's like almost like it's almost like projection or like you know they have to make it seem like they care about the united states like it's an act almost but who am i to say i'm not an actor hal could probably tell me better than that he's a great actor fsb fsb which brings up a good story i don't know if hal's seen this but 
the uh, Russian army is now putting pro-MAGA, pro-Confederate messages on their artillery shells before they shoot them into Ukraine to kill innocent civilians. You heard that right. I'll say it again. The Russian military is now putting pro-MAGA, pro-Confederate messages on artillery shells that they send into Ukraine to kill innocent civilians. So while MAGA embraces Russia in Vladimir Putin's war crimes in their deadly invasion, Russia is now embracing MAGA, which they've always done, I believe, behind the scenes. But now they're starting to do it out in the open. Which, what does that tell you? Um, that they're... they're it, it's just it I, I believe it's a psyop they they said it was messages sent from the united states again i you can't believe anything the russians say so i don't believe that i do believe they're writing them on their fucking artillery shells to make it seem like the messages are coming from the united states so they can create dissent but even still for them to even know to put a maga sign on there for them to even know to put a confederate fucking flag on an artillery shell should tell you an awful lot Peter, Jesus, coming in hot again, Peter. I mean, I'm going to owe you a steak dinner. We're going to have to go out and I'm going to treat you to some, like a nice meal and shit. We're going to, we're going to have to have a good time. <laughs> so I'll keep it short. My name is Brian Jack. I'm from Fayette County and I'm running to represent Georgia's third congressional district because I believe in the America first agenda that everyone in this room has propelled to enable President Trump to make our country great again. <laughs> Bullshit. And Mr. President, earlier today we went through some of your record-setting accomplishments. And because the Ooh, cameras okay. are now on. All right. All right. Hold on. Let me hold on. Hold on. Let me get let me get hold on. Let me get let me get hold on. Let me get slacks is hold on. Get slacks this fucking paper here. Let me go. I gotta get this. I gotta get this. All right. I'm almost ready. All right. List of list of Donald Trump's achievement. Let's go. I thought it best we go through them just one more time. All right. Hit if y'all can enlighten me, which me. president delivered the most secure border in American history? Which president? Hold on. But with that question, you have to say, and also let over a million Americans die in the meantime while the world was dealing with the same pandemic, while the world uh, immigration and migration ceased to exist. Uh, I don't think you can actually finish that question without saying that, but okay, we'll go with 1 million, 1 million 500,000 roughly dead, but nobody at border. Good thing. Okay. Check. Oh, number two. Well, and number gave two. us the best economy in American history. Joe Biden. Okay. Answer number two, Joe Biden. Okay. We're doing well so far. This is going well. Ooh, in 2020, to... which president earned the most votes in American history? And just earlier... Are you shitting me? Is that a fucking joke? <laughs> he didn't even say it like Trump says. Like the most votes that uh, 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 an incumbent... Has, you know what I mean? He didn't even say it the right... <laughs> he didn't even say it the right way. Earlier this year... Who Hold next on. votes in America? Okay, number three. In 2020, which president yep. earned the most votes in American history? Okay, Joe, Robin, uh, Biden. All right, so we got a million dead. Number one's a million dead, but nobody was at the border, so good thing. Number two, the answer was Joe Biden. Number three, the answer was Joe Biden. All right, let's continue. What's number four, sir? We're doing well. We're, we're killing it here. Let's go. And four. just earlier this year, yep. who now holds the record for the most votes in Iowa caucus, New Hampshire primary, and Super Tuesday history? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as Georgia voters, I challenge. Can we talk? Can we just? Can we, sir? I mean, I know it. I know you could. You could. You could kind of say that. It sounds good, but can we talk about not only voter turnout, but also, um maybe the percentage of Republicans that voted for Donald Trump and maybe the percentage of Nikki Haley voters that said they wouldn't fucking piss on Donald Trump if he was fucking on fire. 
Um, Because I think that might be a fact. I don't know. The fact that, you know, a guy that, again, won with 96% of the vote in 2016 and now is struggling mightily to get 60 or 70 um, at best percent of the vote of his party. Um, So I'm going to go with um, not good on number four on that one. That's what I can come up with. Not good. Are we going to continue this? This embarrassing fucking display or what? Punch each and every one of us. Let's get out of November and let's set another record. Let's reelect the greatest president and political athlete of all time, Donald J. Trump. Political athlete. <laughs> political fucking athlete. Oh, Jesus. The cult is strong. The cult is strong, baby. Oh wow, that's like, that's like the equivalent of seeing Donald Trump with a fucking, with Sylvester Stallone's body, Donald Trump's head riding a Velociraptor with a fucking, you know, M two or you know, it, that's the equivalent right there. Calling him a fucking, that is crazy. That is crazy. These people are fucking off their rocker. Trump. athlete i'm dying i can't just laugh this whole stream i'd look like an idiot but that is fucking too good he's great so he's a great he's a great gentleman he's going to go down as a great great congressman and whatever he does after that but he's <laughs> wanted this for a long time and he really sacrificed it because he wanted to stay with the campaign. He was with, with me right from the beginning, and he's as good as you get, so I hope you're going to go and vote for him, and he's going to be there for a long time, and he loves your state, and he loves our country. So, Brian Jack, thank you very much. Appreciate it. I don't know. I just Can you ever trust a guy that has two first names? I don't know. Brian Jack. It's like, it's like the, they, the parents got lazy. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that's what I was laughing at, Al. All that shit, wrong one. That's what I was laughing at, hell, or whatever. You know, he's going to be a great politician, congressman, whatever he does after he gets fired or voted out after his first term. <laughs> too good. It is too good. I, I want to do another thing because it's a Saturday and, you know, it's boring. There's nothing good on television. We'd rather do this anyway, wouldn't we? So... A person who really has, thank you very much, a person who's got tremendous courage and, you know, some people go after her because they're concerned about her. She's very popular, actually. They know that, but a lot of people don't. But she's a woman that showed herself the other night when the president was so re disrespectful to so many millions and millions. <laughs> he's, he's talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene. And what the first thing he said was what? People are concerned about her? I think that's a I think that's an accurate statement. I, I I have no notes. I have no notes on that one. Uh maybe the words following I would disagree with, but I think I do believe there are people concerned uh for Marjorie Taylor Greene. Millions and millions of people. Me. She was willing to shout out. Now sometimes you would say that's not nice, but in this case it was very well needed because we have to shake this country up. This country has to come back, and it's never going to come back unless we have people like Marjorie Taylor Greene. Please come up. Come. Come on up, Marjorie. Come on. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, Georgia, we know what. Uh, 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 we're going to do in 2024. We're going to reelect our favorite president, the Joseph Robin and Biden. Let's go, Georgia. Greatest president in United States history, Donald J. Trump. Right, Georgia? Is she going to grab his crotch? Is this like the reverse grab him by the pussy? Like what she did with that cardboard cutout? She's gonna, it's kind of the same position. She could kind of just do like the sneak, reach around through the podium. Nobody would see. Podium's blocking it. She could do the reach around. She could do the reach around. Little, 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 little crotch grab, reverse crotch grab. You think he's. <laughs> I, think, 
<laughs> Donald Trump surprised by a crotch by a crotch grab. <laughs> oh man. Is it too loud or is this she just too annoying, Deborah? Let me know. Let me know if it's too loud. Let's get it done. You're great. Now go back to your cage. Don't forget to chain her up. You got a lot of courage, that one. In addition, that, and I spoke with Jim Jordan. I All said, right. you know, Jim, I'd Time like out. to invite this gentleman. Time out. Time out. I'd like to say that Blunt Politics with Boston Brian has arrived um, officially uh, now that Hal Sparks is a channel member. Um, I don't think there's any denying um, the capabilities and the, you know, the family atmosphere of this of this platform and all these communities that we've built here. So thank you, Hal. I appreciate it. I do. I really do. I really do. Coming up because uh, you don't hear as much about him, but he is a hero and he's one of yours. And what he's doing in uh, Congress now for exposing horrible, horrible untruth. Horrible. <laughs> horrible. It's it's he's exposing horrible things and people that were really statements that were said about all of us and i just think he's doing such an incredible job i said what do you think jimmy said you got to bring him up barry loudermilk barry come up barry loudermilk is come here barry what a job he's doing thanks barry. please <clears throat> all right we'll skip Asked me to, and I just some wouldn't want to do it because they want to get back to some other things. But you have great people in this state. Mike Collins, representative, friend of ours, true patriot. Thank you, Mike. Great job. Andrew Clyde, Andrew Clyde. Where is Andrew? Oh, shut up. Great job, Andrew. He's a great wrestler. One of Seven, I guess seven years ago. He said, a lot of people don't know that. I got to know it about seven, I guess seven years ago. He's sitting in my office. I started to notice the ears, a little action going on in the ears. I said, Jim, did you ever wrestle? Then I checked his record. This guy was a champion. What do you say? A little action with the ears? Is he talking about cauliflower? Been in college for three years. He was undefeated in high school. I heard he was undefeated. Never defeated. Think of it. I know a lot about sports. To go as a freshman and to beat seniors is almost impossible. He was undefeated. No, no, nope. not even, not even remotely close to being impossible. It's actually extremely fucking possible. It happens all the time. For four years, he was like a hundred and something, and oh, maybe that you know, if his ears were bleeding, if he's got cauliflower ear, maybe he just couldn't hear the kids being molested at Ohio State. Maybe that was the problem. Maybe it was just his ears are so swollen he couldn't hear the cries and the the, the pleas for help and and, and and them fucking pleading with Jim Jordan to fucking do something and say something about the situation. Maybe that's what's um, you know, maybe we're putting two and two together here. Maybe that's why he didn't report all the sexual abuse that he knew about at Ohio State. There could be. Maybe that's maybe that's why. Oh, then he went to a great college where he wrestled and was the NCAA champion and everything else. And people don't know that about him, but they have to know that about Jim Jordan. He's incredible. And his sons are here and they're also champions. So please stand up. The Jordan family. Great. You know what this is? You know what this is? This is ah. Horrible. This is horrible. I'm skipping ahead. I don't like it. Similarities, I'll tell you. You have a great father, fellas, and you guys are doing a great job. Also, champion, top champion wrestlers. I don't know. They're a hell of a lot bigger than you, too, Jim, huh? I don't know. But I asked uh, your boy, I said, so he's an All-American. I said, are you as good as your father? He said, nope, not as good as my father. That's pretty good. You're an All-American, and you say the father was... See, I wouldn't have said that. I would say I was better. Then I'd have a problem with... But uh, it's a great family. And to Polly and everybody, thank you very much. Great job, what you've done. Benjamin and Isaac. 
Benjamin and Isaac, thank you for being here, fellas. Uh, a friend of mine, somebody who is real so oh, respected, Way Bert. You please stand. That's a great family. Thank you. What incredible, isn't it? Right? Never happened before. You know, this with all family. Thank you. What a great family. You didn't see crowds like this with all the years. This is incredible, isn't it? Right? Never. <laughs> yes, yes. It's only about a third of the size of the rallies that you had when you were actually popular in the Republican Party. But who's counting, right? I mean, you're just going to make up the fucking attendance number anyway. Never happened before. You know, they don't want to talk about it, the fake news. There's never been a movement like this ever. We and again, hopefully, whoever's up there, whoever you believe in, he will make sure that a movement like this never fucking happens again. Please. Or at least let it be another fucking 80 years. Because that seems to be the fucking... You know, the portion of time it takes for uh, fascism and people to forget about what this world actually went through in the First World War, Second World War, and even before that, but, uh, you know, just in, in, in recent memory. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it, guys. I mean, the the love and support you guys show is is incredible. And just, like I said, to to, to have you guys here watching, it, 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 it means a lot. Where you come down, you know, look, Biden's here today. He probably has... A hundred people, legit people, I'd say 30. But they work hard and they probably have it. That's where he made the statement about, you know, apologizing for using the word illegal. But he had a very small crowd. But every every place we go, we never have empty seats. We have lots of people standing outside, sometimes in the rain. Here we go. Brian, just wanted to tell you that I had a premature baby that had a brain bleed. They told me he might be blind. It was hell. He is now 28 years old, a college grad, and doing well. That is amazing. That is amazing, and it gives me a lot of hope. And I appreciate you telling us your story. I appreciate you sharing your your experiences. Um, and I hope that your son is successful in whatever he does. And I appreciate that. And for anybody that joined late and is curious why uh, Jane would bring that up is because recently my – my wonderful cousin and her partner, uh, my wonderful cousin Caitlin and her wonderful partner Hannah, um, had beautiful uh, baby twins, premature babies. One was a little over one pound. The other one was, I believe, a little over four pounds. Um, and uh, one of them had a stroke and had a bleeding in the brain. They managed to stop the bleeding, but we're still awaiting um, news on you know what may have what damage may have been caused. Hopefully none. Um, and hopefully we have a situation just like Jane and, um, you know, the, the, you know, the baby's lucky enough to, to, to have a, a long and, and full life. So I, I appreciate you sharing that Jane. Thank you so much. The rain and the gold, but there's never been anything like it. And this is about making America great again. So it's very important. A friend of mine and somebody that should have been senator, and he was a really great senator, but he should have been senator. Bad things happened. David Perdue. David, thank you. Good man. Another friend of mine, he headed up the hearings in Congress when he was going after Mueller. Remember that? You hear his voice. Is it true that you this or that you that? He's like central casting. A friend, uh, just a great guy. What he did at Congress was amazing. Jim and everybody else will testify to that. And uh, he's loved by the people in Georgia. And I assume he's going to be doing something because he's still a young man. Doug Collins. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Great job. You got to watch those hearings. You got to watch the way he grilled Mueller. You remember that? Is it true that you did this? Is it true that you got that? And the guy just said, I don't know. <laughs> Please let me away. Let me go home. What was that? <laughs> Remember that, Doug? You'll never forget that. I have that on the highlight reels, by the way. Georgia Agricultural Commissioner, the Agriculture Commissioner, uh, Tyler, Tyler Harper. Good job you're doing, Tyler. He is a popular guy. Perry, great job. You Thank you. Talking about and for announcing with never great, great people here. Back the White House from our country. I believe. Right, I we believe we're going to have. 
All right. So we'll we'll let's see how much we got left. I'll do another. He's got about twenty minutes left. Well, I guess we'll we'll stick around for it. Fuck it. That's what we're here for, right? We'll keep it going. Keep it going. Show some love, please. If you guys haven't liked the stream, please like it now. If you haven't shared it, please do so. Uh, please become a subscriber. It's free. Um, if you guys would like to uh, uh, hit me up on the Venmo, buy me a coffee, buy me a Gatorade, whatever, that would be wonderful. If you can't do it, don't worry about it. Let's just hang out and have some fun. Uh, again, there's there's merch on my YouTube site. There's Get Them Shirts uh, slash my Shopify that has – uh, a ton of great designs that Mel worked on and spent a lot of time working on. Like this background that you see um, is is all of Mel's doing. Um, I am useless at all of it. Hopefully one day I will learn, but um, it, Mel deserves all the credit. So we'll stick around. Let's finish this fucking off. All right, let's go. Let's fucking go. After four greatest years of the history of our country, I believe that... Every problem Joe Biden has created can be fixed. Every problem can be solved and every injustice. Well, of course, when you make up the issues, when you create fake problems, it then makes it easy for you to say once you get in the White House that you never will uh, see again, uh, that you fixed the problems because the problems don't exist. So therefore, you can tout that you fixed the problems, but they don't exist. <laughs> can be set right. We will bring this country back together through success. The word is success. They said it's revenge. They said, I'm out for revenge. I'm not out for revenge. My revenge will be success. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled, and we will restore peace through strength. I will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. Now, what that means is very simple. We get all these bad deals. We changed a lot of them, most of them, but still. Play that means we just put 100 percent tariff on any country that wants to do trade with the United States. A great policy helped us with China a lot, really, actually. Uh, they, they really enjoyed that, and especially when they only completed about a third of that huge deal that he touts. Um, and then when they screwed the farmers over in this country and decided to buy land elsewhere to grow their own soybeans, and then they don't buy soybeans from the United States farmers anymore. It's good. Things went well. Things went well. It's good. You know, I can see why you like that. Out there. Mel is back. Are you back, babe? Deals. If China or right, any other country you. makes yeah. us pay a tariff or tax, let's say 100 or 200 percent, we will make them pay a reciprocal Thanks. tariff of one. Thank you, Sandy. 100 to 200 percent right back. It's called you screw us and we screw you and everybody's happy. And as tariffs on foreign countries go up. Sorry, I thought you were doing mummy things. My bad. <laughs> My fault. Up taxes on American workers and families will come down. You know, we gave you the largest tax. Thank you, Mick. What a fucking guy, dude. What a fucking guy. Appreciate you, buddy. Right at you, Mel. You deserve every bit of it. Every single fucking bit of it reduction in the history of our country and we're going still further and yet we took in more revenue than ever before and i've I said for many years i will always protect medicare and social security which others are not able to do like joe biden you're not gonna have it right right because it's it's not the republicans that have been caught on camera talking about doing away with medicare and Social Security. It's definitely Joe Biden who has never in his fucking entire career said anything to the sort. It's going to be gone. It's Joe Biden who's destroying them and he is doing it with a migrant invasion. This migrant invasion is much more dangerous than you think in so many other ways. It's going to have huge impact on rights that you're entitled to and that includes Social Security and Medicare. Huge. Medicare. We will restore law and order to our country. I am going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement officials. There it is. There it is. Yep, goes hand in hand with his mass deportations. And don't think for a fucking second that it doesn't. Throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by the radical left for taking strong actions on crime. Strong actions. Can you define strong action, sir? Please. I would love to know what you think is a strong action. 
They can solve the problem. We are going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they have ever been before. We will take over the horribly run capital of the United States of America, Washington. You mean you mean the one that didn't vote for you? The, the, the one that you lost? That one? You're talking about that one. The capital of our entire country, which overwhelmingly said they would not have you anywhere near their fucking city, especially that beautiful 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Washington, <laughs> D.C. Clean it up, renovate it, rebuild our capital city so that it is no longer a nightmare of murder and crime, but rather it will become the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world. People from Georgia go down to Washington now and they get shot. Oh, now it's Georgia. Now it's Georgia. Before it was North Carolina. Then it was South Carolina. Man, he knows a lot of people that went to Washington, D.C. and got shot. Um, funny, he never mentions any names or any specific stories or any news articles that would, you know, back up or corroborate anything that he's saying, but he says it nonetheless. Horrible things are happening. You see graffiti all over the place, beautiful columns built 200 years ago and 100 years ago. Gorgeous columns. You say, how did they ever build them? How did they move them? <laughs> how did they do that? It's like, <laughs> how did they move them? <laughs> All over the place, beautiful columns built 200 years ago and 100 years ago. Gorgeous columns. You say, how did they ever build them? How did they move them? They didn't have the equipment to move them. They moved them through force of will. <laughs> through force of will. Oh, my Jesus. Oh my Jesus. Oh, oh and a hundred years ago. Gorgeous columns. You say, how did they ever build them? How did they move them? They didn't have the equipment to move them. They moved them through force of will. They <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Guys. Guys. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? How oh, this can't be no this <laughs> All right, we'll they be got him there through force of will. You look at these massive structures and you say, How did they ever do that? They didn't have caterpillar tractors, they didn't have any <laughs> anything. They had their hands and their muscle, and they got it done, and now I see graffiti on it. Not gonna happen. We're gonna take care of our capital. We're gonna take care of our capital. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school, any school at all, pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content. Excuse me, sir. <clears throat> sir, um, I'd like to call into, uh, uh, like to call into fact and put it into evidence that no schools are doing that. You haven't managed to come up with a single, again, piece of evidence, single school that you can name. On to the lives of our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. Well, now, how does that work? Because I'm pretty sure in order for me to go to school... And I'm sure it was the same with you. You did have to get, what was it? Measles, mumps, and rubella. Um, uh, what were the other? I'm, I'm pretty sure you did have to get, um, I'm, I'm, I think every school, even colleges, right? Make sure that you've had some sort of inoculation. Um, correct me in the chat if I'm wrong, but I don't see how you're going to do that when every single school on earth has some sort of mandate for, you know, or requirement for the vaccine that you take. And I will keep men out of women's sports. Again, you spent 77 minutes talking about The Apprentice. 
Now we're on to something that, again, statistically, one of the most ridiculous things to be saying in a, in a, in a, like, it's a huge problem. They come up with the same two examples. Like they come up with the same seven pictures of uh, Hunter Biden's laptop and then say that they have so much information on it. And I will fully protect and uphold our great and very important under siege second amendment. We will under siege with Steven Seagal. Protect. We will protect innocent life and we will restore free speech and I will secure our elections. We will secure our elections. If we don't, we are a country in trouble. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. Very simple. But until then, Republicans must go out and we have to swamp them. We have to go out and we have to get so many votes. We want this to be a landslide. That way it's too big to rig. We want to make it too big to rig. Makes sense. Does make sense. Does make sense that somehow the Democrats uh, managed to pull off the most widespread um, and perfectly planned conspiracy that involved uh, millions and millions of people to coordinate and hijack the election systems uh, in the United States and somehow get a hold of all the ballots in every state and make copies. And they did all this while, um, they did all this while you were in office and Republicans had power. And now that the Democrats are in power, Joe Biden is the president. You think they won't be able to do that? Somehow you think you're going to just outvote one of the most widespread and most perfectly planned conspiracies. Obviously they have we have the blueprint on how to to win elections no matter what happens. So how are you going to beat that again? Again, satire, YouTube, satire, satire, sat, 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 satire. Rick, if you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. So if you want to save America, then go vote. The Georgia primary is this Tuesday, March 12th, and Georgia could be the state that puts us. Look, if we win Georgia, we're going to win the election. Let me put it that way. Okay. You win neither. We have to win Georgia. So get everyone you know and let's send crooked Joe Biden packing. Let's send them out. Stop yelling at the Americans. God, you sound so angry. What is wrong with you? Are you angry? Have you taken injections? What is wrong with you yelling at Americans like that? God, jeez, you must be sick in the head and corrupt and incompetent. So in conclusion, together we are taking on some of the most menacing forces Tell me, tell me those are not the best words Donald Trump says. In conclusion. <laughs> and vicious opponents our people have ever seen. We've never seen anything like it before. But no matter how hateful and corrupt the communists and criminals that we're fighting against are, you must never forget this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. And I. This is your home. This is your heritage, and our American liberty is your God-given right. From Atlanta to Augusta, from Savannah to Columbus, beautiful Columbus. We just left Columbus, and it's quite a place. And from Athens to right here in Rome, we inherit the legacy of red-blooded American patriots who gave their blood sweat and tears to defend our country and defend our freedom. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the ocean, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up the skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism. Ran the ramparts, built the airports in the Civil War. 
and made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world. Oh, fucking. Okay. Okay, here we go with the music. Q and on music. Q. What's he waiting for? But now we are a nation. Okay, right off the bat, does this sound like music that is inspiring? Is this an inspirational? Is this inspirational music that is meant to inspire people to you know get out there and do good, or is this specifically picked as something that will be? dramatic and uh, uh, suspenseful in decline we are a failing nation we are a nation that is the highest inflation in 50 years I wonder how that happened how did that happen I wonder how that happens I can't think of anything. where banks are collapsing and interest rates are skyrocketing Likewise, we are a nation where energy costs have reached the highest levels in our history. We are no longer energy independent or energy dominant as we were just a few short years ago. We are a nation that is begging Venezuela and others for oil. Please, please, please help us, Joe Biden says. Yet we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other nation anywhere in the world. We are a nation that just recently heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will be reducing their oil production while at the same time substantially increasing the price. And we met that threat by announcing that we will no longer be drilling for oil. <sighs> in large that? areas of Alaska. And he's talking about Anwar? Is that what he's talking about, Anwar? Does he think that is like you still think there's like a lake of fucking oil underneath us that we just stick a straw in and like fill up our buckets and somehow we refine that at home and we'll make that into gas and the shit that we need. He has no idea how it works. And elsewhere on our precious land, we are a nation that is consumed by the radical left's Green New Deal, yet everyone knows that the Green New Scam is fake and will lead to our destruction. We are a nation whose leaders are demanding all electric cars. Just no. No. Just flat out, no, they're not. That's pretty easy, mainstream media, right? That was easy. That was easy for me to say. No, that's a lie. What he just said, well, this right here. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. We are a nation whose leaders are demanding all electric cars. Blatant fucking lie. Easy, easy peasy. Despite the fact that they don't go far, cost too much, and whose batteries are produced in China, where materials are only available in China, when an unlimited amount of gasoline is available inexpensively in the United States, but is not available in China. And now... China. China. We are a nation that wants to make our revered and very powerful army tanks the best anywhere in the world, all electric, so that despite the fact that they also are not able it would be It would be extremely terrible for a, a silent tank on the battlefield not to be able to be recognized through heat signatures or, you know, sound. Um, it's that's not really what you're looking for. I guess that's not what you're looking for in, 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 in military. You don't actually want to be able to sneak up on the enemy without creating any sound so that you can catch him by surprise and uh, uh, thoroughly, uh, uh, you know, obtain your objective. Um, what you want is is loud, really loud tanks so they know you're coming uh, 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 a long time away so that they have time to prepare. That's, that's what you want. That's what you want. Able to go far 
Fewer pollutants will be released into the air as we blast our way through enemy territory in an environment. Where? Where are we blasting anything through anything right now? Nowhere. And, 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 and you know, Lord willing, we don't have to use them ever again. But I don't think it would be a bad thing for A, the, the, the biggest fucking single cause of pollution on Earth, which I believe is the United States military. Fact check me in the fucking in, in the chat on that one. But would it be a bad thing if they, you know, maybe polluted less? I don't know. Fighter jets with a green stamp of energy savings. The losing 15% efficiency, but allowing us to keep our enemy's atmosphere clean of emissions. Again, a silent fucking plane. Not something I, not something I'm aware that the United States military is doing. Um, I'm sure they're looking into it. Uh, I don't believe we've actually unle unveiled our first <laughs> all-electric uh, fighter, but silent anything in the military is pretty good to me. <laughs> As we viciously and unceremoniously <laughs> attack them at levels that they have never seen before. Who are these people that would do this to us? Who are these people who would destroy our country? Who are these people? They are called uh, Republicans. Um, yeah, they're led by a second generation rich kid who fucked up everything his father built, uh, has bankrupted his companies several times, and somehow has managed to uh, bankrupt three casinos, um, which is probably the most difficult fucking thing to do on the world because. Literally, the tagline of a casino is the fucking house always wins. Yet, the greatest businessman on earth failed three times to make a casino work. And we could go on with the 91 charges and the, the indictments and the, I mean, but it shouldn't have to go past there, right? I mean, I guess really shouldn't have to go past the fact that he's a rapist, um, fully adjudicated again by a jury of his peers, um, and not only raped the woman, but then goes on to uh, defame the woman um, and then again was found uh, 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 guilty and liable of, of defaming her. So shouldn't have to go past that. And this speech, making fun of Joe Biden's uh, speech impediment, pretty fucking disgusting if you ask me. Low blow. You know, if you have other shit to, 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 to go on, you really don't have to go for the easy shit, do you? You don't have to go for the obvious. But he's got nothing. He's got fucking nothing. And yet somehow... The people in this fucking crowd don't see it. They don't see what me and you see somehow. I don't know. People who want our country to be destroyed. We are a nation that ended oil exploration and production in the U.S. Just as the price of oil reached an all-time high. What are the country would... Oh, my God. He just doesn't understand anything, right? As far as I'm aware, they stopped issuing permits which has no effect because they have 9,000 open permits where they could be drilling to their fucking heart's content. But they're not. Because if they did, the price of oil would go down and they wouldn't make the profits that they want. So what they're doing, and again, this isn't the United States' oil. Private companies, private corporations, then goes on to the market. We buy it at the market value. I mean... Uh, how I'm a, I'm a plumber. How the fuck am I sitting here and I know more than he does? Do such a foolish thing. What other country would be so self-destructive? Can we be energy independent, even dominant again? Yes, so yes, and quickly, says President Trump. Yes, so yes, we can. We are a nation that surrendered in Afghanistan, leaving dead soldiers, American citizens, and 85 billion. You, talk, you talking about the big hook? <laughs> they, fucking, they should get the big hook drag them right out they had to be a big hook though unfortunately really big hook billion dollars worth of the finest military equipment in the world behind and also abandoning bagram in the world behind and 85 billion dollars worth of the okay anybody that doesn't know and hasn't been around we did not leave 85 billion dollars of military equipment in afghanistan that is the number for the total amount of equipment that we uh, uh, sent and used during our entire fucking deployment to Afghanistan. Uh, roughly 14 billion of that is uh, military equipment given to the Afghan military, which I believe 
is the equipment that was left behind. Not only that, but the equipment was made sure to be disabled. It is not to be used again. A lot of these things can be disabled with just removing some of the electronic, electronic components and chips. Uh, a lot of it was blown up, and anything that was left behind is stuff that really had no fucking meaning. And when you see the Afghan, uh, 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 you know, the Taliban rolling around in United States military equipment, um, we were there for 20 years, okay? If you think in that time the United States didn't lose, abandon, uh, uh, lose any battles where they lost equipment, where it was then uh, uh, in, the, in the hands of the Taliban, you're, you're out of your mind. You are out of your fucking skull. These people, through battles and through you know different situations, had a, a shitload of our equipment. Whether it be night vision goggles, whether it be the 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 uh, the buffaloes, the the big trucks, uh, they had them. So when you when you see it, it didn't that that doesn't mean we left it there for them. Finest military equipment in the world behind, and also abandoning Bagram, one of the biggest military bases anywhere in the world, and only one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons and we are a nation right right anything that wasn't anything that wasn't disabled uh um through you know the means of just not being able to to operate uh was was blown up destroyed um I, i'm pretty sure the united states military had it covered donald i'm pretty sure they know how to to you know to make it so they don't just leave all of their equipment in enemy hands i think they've done this before wouldn't be the first time Probably not going to be the last, unfortunately. But it's just, it's, it's asinine to, to, to think that we left 80, every single piece of equipment, every bullet, every gun. Come on. That allowed Russia and Ukraine to fight, killing hundreds of thousands of Allowed Russia and Ukraine to fight. I'm going to rewind on that one because that's fucked up. One hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons. Okay, so Bagram, he's talking about Bagram. He's talking about he's talking about leaving Afghanistan, but not really leaving Afghanistan. He wants to leave Afghanistan, but also keep Bagram Air Base, which means technically we're not leaving Afghanistan, but we are leaving Afghanistan. But we're going to we're just going to leave a uh, maybe a, pl a, a platoon at uh, Bagram and in in you know leave them there with nothing, and we're going to take everybody else out because that makes fucking sense. We either hold it, we either stay in Afghanistan and hold Bagram with the entire fucking defense force that we had there, or we leave. There's only two options, and it was never going to be pretty. There is no such thing as a pretty evacuation, a, 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 a pretty evac from, from a, a military engagement. It doesn't happen. It's always messy. It's always dirty. You can't control what the other side does. And it's really funny, again, bringing up another good point, where Donald Trump says that he totally destroyed in the entirety of the ISIS caliphate. Right. So why was it ISIS-K that was responsible for the bombing um, in Afghanistan, uh, you know, in the withdrawal? Why? Why? How is that possible? If you took out the entire fucking caliphate, how are they still uh, responsible for the 13 deaths? Explain to me that one. And we are a nation that allowed Russia and Ukraine to fight, killing hundreds of thousands of people. And it will only get worse. It would never have happened with me as your president. And for four straight years. It didn't happen. Likewise, the horrifying attack on Israel would never have happened. They wouldn't even have thought of doing such bullshit. Bullshit. Israel was 100% unequivocally, undeniably attacked under your leadership. Pretty much monthly, if you want to look it up. Not only that, if you want to look at the other engagements, the other skirmishes and the other wars that started under your leadership around the world. There's a pretty fucking long list on Wikipedia. There's a pretty long list on other websites that you can check out that list the year, the month, who fought, what they were fighting about, and it was under your fucking leadership. So don't give me that bullshit. It's your thing if President Trump was in the Oval Office. Iran was broke under the Trump administration. They didn't have the money to fund Hamas, Hezbollah and all of the other instruments of terror that they funded previously. But those sanctions were lifted by a corrupt Biden administration, and now Iran is a rich country again, with $221 billion and another $6 billion that they got for hostages from... <sighs> for aid. For aid. 
Christmas and 10 billion. Yeah, that's what, oh, that's fucking great. When did they make that 6 billion, actually? Where did that six billion dollars come from, and why did the United States have it? Where did that? Where did this? Does anybody know where the six billion came from? When did Iran actually make that six billion dollars? Because it wasn't under Joe Biden, motherfucker. It was under your administration, your fucking administration, not Joe Biden. <laughs> so keep talking. In dollars for electricity. You gonna fall for the banana in the tailpipe? Yeah, it's a hell of a punch you got there, Taggart. That one's for hell. To Iraq, all compliments of an incompetent... What? All what? What was that? City to Iraq, all compliments of... I, I don't know what he's saying. I don't know what that is. Dollars for electricity to Iraq. All compliments of an incompetent Biden administration. They gave compliment. I don't even know what he's trying to say. And ten billion dollars for electricity to Iraq. All compliments of an incompetent Biden administration. Is he trying to say compliments? Is that what is that what's trying to come out? I'm, I'm dead serious here. I am dead serious. Is he trying to say compliments of? Is that what's going on? Holy shit. Isn't even fucking close. All compliments of. Hell, that's a drop, buddy. That is a drop. Dollars for electricity to Iraq. All compliments of an incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Biden administration, they gave them so many compliments and they gave them so oh, much money. See, that's what he does. That's what he does. That's what he does. If he fucks up the first time, he has to interject that word somehow into like the next couple sentences to make sure people know he actually does know how to say the word. That's what he does. Hold on. What'd you say, Al? <laughs> Where'd you go? I lost you. Fuck. It's hard. There's a lot. Of, oh, there you are. Oh, you're laughing. <laughs> money. And China with Taiwan is next. We are a nation that allows radical left terror. Yes, because we all know everybody that, that, that knows, knows China is in just perfect financial position to, to, to launch a, uh, a, a military invasion across um, a sea um, and then do an amphibious landing uh, on Taiwan. Um, everybody knows that China is doing extremely well right now, um, which again, <laughs> which again is crazy why the Republicans are confused why Chinese nationalists and Chinese people are showing up at the border. Uh, the same reason everybody else is leaving their country, because they're fucking starving. They're shit. They're not being taken care of by their government. Their government is collapsing. Uh, their government is, is spying on them at every turn. Uh, the government is turning AI into... Uh, 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 China into a police state using AI. Um, they don't even need police officers anymore. They just stick cameras up in every corner. They actually have AI systems in China that will shame somebody for jaywalking. They have a big screen on the fucking side of the street, and if you jaywalk, the camera will take your picture, put your fucking face up on this huge screen, and will shame you for 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 jaywalking. It's fucking, it, it's crazy. And as Hal says, 40% of rural Chinese are malnourished. I mean, there's a reason people leave countries. There's a reason that people leave everything they've ever known. They pick up and leave what they have and they've, uh, you know, their entire fucking legacy behind and, and come to this country seeking a better life. There's a reason behind it all. They don't just say one day, oh, you know what? You know, it's fucking sunny out today. It's going to be rainy tomorrow. What do you say we head to the United States tomorrow while it's raining? It's, I mean, come on. Let's be fucking realistic about this shit when we talk about it. to violently attack our cities, leaving behind massive destruction and death, and nothing happens to the criminals that do these terrible things. There is no punishment. But when people who love our country protest on January 6th in Washington, they become hostages unfairly imprisoned. 
No, fuck you with this hostage bullshit. I'm so sick of this fucking hostage bullshit. They're being fucking held and charged and tried just like every other stupid motherfucker next to them in the cells. Let's not fucking, that's ridiculous. Isn't for long periods of time. We are a third world nation that has weaponized its law. We are a third. Obviously, he has no idea why that doesn't make sense. But the original definition of a third world nation was any country not associated directly with the USSR or the United States. Therefore, making them part of the third world, not the first world, not the second world, the third world. Somehow, Westerners have now transformed that definition into uh, South American, Central American uh, uh, nations that have uh, less money, uh, that may have a corrupt government, that may have problems with their uh, uh, um, uh, with their economy. We have we have taken that third world uh, moniker and changed it. Originally, it was anybody not associated with the United uh, with the USSR or the United States. Law enforcement against opposing political party like never ever before has happened in our country. We've got a Federal Bureau of Investigation that won't allow bad election changing facts to be presented to the public and which offers one. Strange. It's almost like he had 60 something court cases to prove all of that. How'd those go? Million dollars to a writer of fiction about Donald Trump. To lie and say it was fact where Hunter Biden's laptop from hell was Russian disinformation and the FBI knew it wasn't. But 51 intelligence agents said it was. And a Department of Justice that refuses to want it was Russian disinformation in the. I'm surprised he hasn't taken this part out yet. You'd think with Smanoff being uh, arrested twice uh, with James Comer's whole fucking story being blown up in his face with Jim Jordan and everything he said looking like a fucking asshole with diarrhea in his face. You think he might take that whole thing out because it seems to me like these 51 intelligence officers were right. The FBI knew it wasn't, but 51 intelligence agents said it was and a Department of Justice that refuses to investigate egregious acts of voting irregularities and fraud. And we have a man who is totally corrupt and the worst president in the history of our country who is cognitively impaired and in no condition to lead and is now in charge of dealing with Russia and possible nuclear war. I'm not even going to, I'm not going to touch the nuclear. Th I mean, we, come on. How many times has uh, Russia drawn the line in the sand? Uh, first, it was what? Um, if we send them fucking in anything at all, then it was if we send them any tanks. And then it was if we send them any uh, Patriot missile systems. And if it was if we send them any HIMARS, now it's if we send them any F-16s. Nothing yet which would be World War III and far more devastating than any of the previous world wars because of the weaponry that no one even wants to think about. We are a nation that no longer has a free... He loves to, <laughs> he loves to say that it won't be tank battles and, like, you know, people in trenches, and literally that's exactly what the fuck's happening in Ukraine right now. Tank on tank, trench on trench, drone on drone, artillery... Uh, this is World War II style fighting, even World War I style fighting when you go back to the trench warfare. Uh, so for him to say it's just fucking ass and it's literally happening as he's saying it, it won't happen. I mean, that's that pretty much sums up Donald Trump in a nutshell. Free and fair press, fake news is all you get. And they indeed. Oh, yes, they are indeed the enemy of the people. They the refuse that, to do oh, press. Fake news is all you get. And they indeed, oh yes, they are indeed the enemy of the people. <laughs> what? Like, he just, he struggles, right? He's struggling a lot more now. Like, it, this shit's happening a lot more. And I know I like, you know, people have been talking about his mental decline and, and you know, his age and stuff. But I really honestly and truly think that we are seeing it right now. This right now is what people thought was going to happen and what people predicted was going to happen years ago people they refuse to discuss the biden crime family but enjoy covering the false indictments of donald j trump who has done nothing wrong except win an election that was not supposed to be able to be won 
We are a nation where free speech is no longer allowed and where crime is rampant and out of control like never. Where crime is down <laughs> overall. Uh, you ever, know, ever good. before. We are a nation that is allowing Iran to build a massive nuclear weapon and China to use the trillions and trillions of dollars it has taken from us to build a military to rival our own. And less than three years ago, we had Iran, China, Russia, and North Korea in check. They respected us. They were afraid of us. Which is, I'm sure, why you had to threaten uh, uh, <laughs> nuclear war with Kim Jong-un. Because what better way to show how well nations are getting together than calling them little rocket man and telling them, you know, they'll see fire and fury like the world has never seen before. That says good relationship to me. It does. And then when you give them the opportunity to have the, you know, the the, the publicity and the fucking optics of meeting you at the, 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 the DMZ line, which did absolutely fucking nothing for the United States, but once again put Kim Jong-un on the world stage, gave him some prestige. Good job, Trump. Good fucking job. That was worth it. They weren't going to do a thing against us, and everyone knows it. And now Russia and China are holding summits to carve up the world. And no, 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 no. You got that wrong. I think China is having summits on carving up Russia when they lose. I believe that's what's going on. I believe they already have maps of uh, territory that they're going to take back when Russia loses this. So you might want to... Rethink that, Stephen Miller, when you put that in the next speech. Perhaps most importantly, we are a nation that is no longer. We are so close to a thousand people watching. Nine seventy nine. Come on, guys, let's no go. One admired, time. Admired, respected, or listened to on the world stage. We are a nation. Not listened to on the world stage yet. Joe Biden somehow managed to negotiate the release of hostages and ceasefires, and you know, although personally, I wish more was being done in that situation. I think we do have to recognize that the 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 lengthy policy of the United States supporting Israel um, and the limitations that Joe Biden has on telling a country exactly what it can do um, and can't do. But to say that we have no say or no prestige on the world stage anymore is ridiculous. That is in many ways become seven more people, 993. Let's go. A joke. And we are a nation that is hostile to liberty, freedom, faith, and even hostile to God. We are a nation whose economy is hostile to God. No, it's not the God part so much. It's the assholes that say they worship God, yet don't follow any of the, you know, the writings and beliefs that, you know, Jesus laid out for you to follow, you know, such as helping people, you know, giving the shirt off your back. Uh, giving somebody water when they're thirsty, food when they're when they're hungry, uh, giving them shelter when they're homeless, you know that 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 type of shit. Not not taking rights away from women, not uh, uh, not literally sticking your hand in a woman's uterus to tell her that she can or cannot have a baby, you know that type of shit. Not telling uh, teachers what they, you know, that they're going to be arrested and put in jail for several years for teaching the correct history um, and not whitewashing it for people. That type of shit. It's collapsing into a cesspool of ruin. 998, let's fucking go, dude. Let's fucking go. Come on. Come on. Whose people. supply chain is broken, whose stores are not stocked, whose deliveries are not coming, and who's... We're still going with the stores are not stocked bullshit? The fuck? <laughs> what? This educational system is ranked at the bottom of every single list. It has been... For a long time. We are a nation that just sold a once great company, United States Steel. 1,002 people watching. Let's fucking go, guys. You guys are the best. You guys are the best. I don't know why that excites me so much, but it does. I do appreciate it. Let's fucking go. To Japan. We are a nation whose stock market's continued success is totally contingent on MAGA winning the next election. That's why it's going up. We are a nation whose stock market's continued success is totally contingent on MAGA. <laughs> I love it. That's too good. That is too good. I know he's been working this into his recent speeches, but this is fucking beautiful. 
fucking beautiful. The stock market is only doing well because people believe Donald Trump in several fucking months <laughs> is going to win the election. And, and of course, I, come on, I can't even, that's just beautiful. Winning the next election, that's why it's Napa, going you know? up. We are a nation where large packs of sadistic criminals and thieves are allowed to go in. Peter, I really do have to thank you, brother. I mean, not just a passing thank you, not just uh, 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 something that doesn't do uh, justice to how much that you've already helped this, um, you know, my my show and this platform. Um, so thank you, literally from the bottom of my heart. I d appreciate it more than, than I will ever be able to express. And I hope that everybody in the chat shows peter some love i mean that's just to, to to step up like that is is really truly amazing went to stores and openly rob them beat up and kill their workers and customers and leave with armloads of goods but with no retribution where the authority of our great police has been taken where their families and pensions have been threatened and their lives would be destroyed for the mere mention of the words law enforcement What? Been taken where their families and pensions have been threatened and their lives would be destroyed for the mere mention of the words law enforcement. Going out with a bang, Donnie, huh? Going out with a fucking bang. Their families will be taken away from them because of the mere mention of the words law enforcement. Let's go one more time on that one. Has been taken where their families and pensions have been threatened and their lives would be destroyed for the mere mention of the words law enforcement. We are a nation where fentanyl and other forms of illegal drugs are easier to get than groceries to feed our beautiful families. We have become a drug infested nation, crime ridden nation. We have become a nation. Big crumbs, huge crumbs all over the place. Big, big, giant crumbs. We have become just a crummy, crummy mess is what we've become. Nation like nobody thought possible in many. Nobody, nobody honestly thought possible we could be that crummy. But we have become the crummiest nation on the crummy scale the cases we have become quite honestly a horrible and unfair nation thank you daphne oh you're the fucking best come on oh, who's better than you guys honest to god who is better than you guys I'm here with my girlfriend mel i'm here with the best people on the internet let's go I mean, does it get better than this? Hal was in the chat. I might still be. I mean, what a community we have here. Thank you. We will institute the powerful death penalty for drug dealers. Where each de Thank you, Sue. Appreciate you. You're also a warrior. Come on, it takes a lot more. You have to be a lot stronger as a woman to stand up in today's society than, than, than it takes for a man to stand up. Honest to God. So I, I, I throw that pro-democracy warrior title right back at you um it's not me it's easy for me to just sit here in front of the camera it's difficult for uh any woman in this country to to speak their mind and to you know to to, to really push push back on 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 the evil that is being perpetrated against you guys dealer is responsible for the death during their lives of 500 people or more mothers will never again be forced to watch their children overdosing and hopelessly die have a good day, Twilight. Hope you enjoy the rest of your. Uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's healthy. Tell somebody you love them. Lying in their arms, screaming, "What can I do? What can I do? What can I do?" We're almost done, guys. We're almost done. We'll get through it. We'll get through it. Almost there. I appreciate you guys hanging in. More people now than when we started. So thank you. We are a nation whose once revered airports are a dirty, crowded mess. You. Yes, and as somebody that's flown many, many times in the last several months. Uh, 
I've had zero problems, zero delays, zero things stolen. I've seen zero murders. Um, nobody was having an overdose in the bathrooms. Uh, I didn't see any graffiti on the wall. Everything was clean. Plane ran smoothly. Uh, we got there actually ahead of time. We sit and wait for hours and then are notified that the plane won't leave and they have no idea when they will, where ticket prices have tripled. They don't have the pilots to fly the planes. They don't have qualified air traffic controllers. And they just don't know what the hell they're doing. We are a nation that screens its citizens viciously at the ports. Every single port. What? But if you are an illegal alien, you are allowed to flow through our southern border by the millions. I thought we had a wall. Isn't there a wall? I thought there was a wall. Could have sworn you said you built like 600 miles of wall that was supposed to do the trick. Are you telling me it's not doing the trick? Are you telling me that was a complete waste of fucking time, money, energy, and resources? Why is Texas putting up barbed wire? They have a wall. Right? 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 Right. So sad. And look what has just happened to one particular great, great family with a magnificent daughter who is no longer with us. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, its willpower, and its strength. We are a nation that has lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. The horror. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. The literally, the entire world is leaving their fucking countries to get to the United States because of how well we're doing. Because of how well and how fast we recovered from one of the worst pandemics this world has ever seen. Because we have uh, uh, open jobs. Because we have uh, uh, a president that isn't going to treat you like a piece of dirt. Because we have uh, uh, a president that has empathy, compassion. Because we have the, uh, uh, you know, you have all the options in the world if you can get here. If you can get through the asylum process, which is ridiculously fucking complicated, it needs to be streamlined. The possibilities are endless. Why wouldn't you want to come here? If it was a hellhole, why is everybody coming here? It was hardworking patriots like you who built this country. And it is hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. 2024 is our final battle. Except for that entire generation that sacrificed their lives to fight for democracy um, on a faraway land for people that didn't speak the same language. Um, you mean, you mean fighting for your country like that? Because unfortunately you have bone spurs and I don't think you're going to be able to do it so far as you've told people in the past. So unfortunately you'll never have the opportunity to fight for your country like the, the past generations and generations today are doing. Battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. And we will throw off the... <laughs> in, in Trump's defense, he can only land his plane at shitty regional private airports because he doesn't pay his bills. He hasn't set foot in a public airport in decades. Plus, he's dumb. Fucking facts. This is like when he when he talks about uh, when he had that trip and he got into the electric vehicles. Remember, what, where was he, down in Iowa? I think it was down in the Iowa caucus, and it was all cold, and he said that he passed a bunch of uh, uh, electric vehicles on the side of the road, and he actually got in one like Donald Trump was fucking getting in. Uh, uh, in <laughs> anybody's just like a random vehicle. The sick political class, that's what they are. They hate our country. We will rout the fake news media, we'll drain the swamp, and we will liberate our country from these tyrants and villains once and for all. Like those patriots before us, 
We will not bend. We will not break. We will not yield. We will never give in. We will never give up. And we will never, ever back down. Except for the four times you surrendered to authorities. Um, you know, and we have the mug shots to prove it. Except for those times you surrendered. And except for, you know, in the 2020 election where you lost all your cases and tried everything you possibly could to remain in power. And then you, you know, gave that up too. So, you know, of course not. With your support, we will go on to victory, the likes of which no one has ever seen before. We will evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House and we will take back our country on November 5th, 2024. Pretty sure that's not how it works, even if you were to win. Do believe you wouldn't actually take the reins of power until January 2025. But those are just, you know, minor details, I guess. It will go down as the most important date in the history of our country. The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. GDP, <clears throat> stock market. <clears throat> we will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Georgia. God bless you all. Thank you. Holy shit. We did it. We got through it. <laughs> we got through it. Oh, man. What do you say, guys? What do you say? We got through it. I appreciate you sticking with me. I mean, it doesn't take much, literally doesn't take much to see that this man shouldn't run a fucking peanut farm. I mean, this guy is not fit for fucking Foot Locker, and there's nothing wrong with that, but this man's trying to be president of the United States, okay? There are two choices. You have two fucking choices. Fascism or Joe Biden and democracy. And I'm glad that there's over a thousand people in this chat right now that I believe are going to choose democracy. We need this to happen if we lose this this time we will not get it back and i know it sounds hyperbolic but it's not this is the most important time for you to get out and vote for you to get your friends your family your co-workers your aunts whoever get them out to vote i promise you you will not regret voting for democracy in this next election so please, let's all stick together. Let's, you know, keep listening to Hal. Keep listening to Midas Touch. Keep getting the facts. Keep calling Donald Trump out. Keep listening to what he's saying, though. I know it's difficult. Believe me, I know it's fucking difficult. Believe me, it's, it is torture. It is torture, but it's uh, unfortunately a necessary torture at this point. Um, we, we, we have to continue to stay involved. We have to continue to 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 recognize what these people are actually trying to do to this country when you have russia infiltrating the republican party to us to to a point that they are actively spreading russian propaganda willfully in front of any fucking camera they could possibly find against the president of the united states of america in which they are are, are employees of the government in this is real okay this is fucking real. This is what this is what people all over the world and all over the country were afraid of happening uh, in, uh, when, in the Cold War is is 
having Russia get to a point where they infiltrate uh, an entire Republican Party and cause dissent. Literally their only goal, cause dissent. The more they can show that we are chaotic, the more it proves that their way of life may be the, the alternative. So uh, thank you to all the mods. I don't know if there's more than Mel at this point. It might just be Mel because she's just a rock star taking care of the whole chat. But if there are any more that have signed up, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, thank you to everybody that 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 donated, that that is helping produce this content, that is helping me, you know. I, like I said, I want to do this full time. Um, it might be a surprise to anybody in my family watching, but I would like this to be what I do. I feel like I can make a difference. I feel like I have a voice in this situation. Um, I feel like it's needed. And I feel like it's, 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 it's a time in my life where it's time to step up and it's time to, to, to not be silent. Um, anybody that's, um, silent at a time like this is complicit. Um, and I refuse to be complicit in letting fascism take hold of the United States of America in whatever form it is. Uh, so please, 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 stay involved and thank you for all the well wishes for my cousin um in the baby i will absolutely share them um just thank you very much literally from the bottom of my heart from I, I can't believe the amount of people that are watching i can't believe the amount of people that have donated i can't believe the 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 incredible comments and the the encouragement um i'll continue to make this is is best the show and is most entertaining and obviously we'll cover other stuff it just happened to be that donald trump spoke for two fucking hours so uh please so join me next next week next sunday 1 p.m same time same place um take care of yourselves take care of somebody else you know tell your family you love them call your parents call whoever's closest to you make sure they know how how important they are uh in your life and what they mean to you because unfortunately as as the saying goes you just never know so until next time, I do appreciate it. Uh, keep kicking ass. Keep calling the shit out. Till next time, I'm Boston Brian. You guys have a great night. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Peter. Peter, Peter, Peter. Thank you, guys. Thank you to everybody that was a member. Thank you to everybody that was a member. Whatever you guys did. Uh, Any way you're helping, if you share, if you like, if you subscribe. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I just wanted to come on and thank you again, honestly, uh, for, 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 for all the donations, for the super chats, for everything. It's just... I'm sorry. I, I, I don't think I thanked you enough. And I wanted to come back and thank you. <laughs> so thank you. Have a great day, guys. I'm back. I'm back. Let's go. Um, so I just wanted to remind you, patreon.com slash Boston Brian. Please. There's a bunch of tears on there. Maybe something to your liking. Uh, a lot of good stuff going on in there. We got merch going out. There's gifts. There's uh, Zoom meetings that we do. We got a couple Zoom meetings coming up too. So please don't forget that. Uh, and thank you guys. I really do appreciate it.